That's the whole intention. Come in here and argue and then state, I don't want to go back and forth. I mean, uh, we know most people say definition of insanity, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. It's insane. Why take the bait? Stop it. Because it ain't set up for argument. The whole point is to show people that y'all are full of crap. Y'all put things up on here. Y'all spend taxpayer money. Y'all do all this wasteful spending, but point the finger at the long wolf, the one that's still standing, right? The one that's still standing. Y'all point the finger at me when it's you guys that's really running them up. You four, trusty house, trusty Belcher, trusty Noah, and trusty Tammy Brown who don't read nothing. She listens to what y'all tell her to do and come and vote accordingly. This is ridiculous. Well, hey, hey, well, hey, he's the accountant, right? I'd really like to know. Can somebody tell me? Oh, it's quiet now. In the words of Tiffany Henry, it's quiet now. I can wait. Okay, trusty, why are you so concerned about my security detail that you guys got me happen to have because all y'all mess that y'all created? Let's be crystal clear about that. So stop with the drama. New year but the same mayor. We're gonna be talking about the village board meeting that happened yesterday. And I must tell you, I'm not feeling well right now, but fighting, fighting a little bit of a cold, but I had to make a video to talk about this meeting that I saw last night. And one word, it was messy, just messy. The way this group of people, trustees and the mayor and the other administration officials are just not on the same page, it was, a disaster. It shows the level of dysfunction that is here. And it starts from the top. It starts with the mayor, Tiffany Hayer. The live stream that was on last night was incredible. It was about 800 people that I've saw, probably went up to 900, which is interesting because I think the population of the village is about 20,000. So 900 people was watching um, this live stream yesterday and they were from all over the country. In fact, it's international. I saw someone talking about this story that was from Jamaica. So this is something that's across the country trying to understand how crazy this situation is. So we're gonna talk about that, talk about some of the highlights from the meeting. It was three hours. I will tell you guys right now, it is straight out of a reality TV show. When you watch this meeting, it's like, you can't believe it's real. Come on, stop, it's kitty stuff. It's like, I'm over it, like stop, let's move forward. This is a meeting that's supposed to help take care of budgetary concerns and tax levies and, and operations that's supposed to help the village and take care of the residents. Everyone is just so petty and disrespectful contentious. This is not a healthy environment for anybody. And like I said before, it starts from the top. So this village board meeting primarily focusing on budgetary concerns, tax levies, and other operations of the village. The meeting did open up with a commitment to spreading love and positivity, overshadowing any negativity out there. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Because a lot of negativity is coming in the mayor's way. And the mayor had a lot to say about the negativity that's coming her way from many content creators, many news officials, obviously some of the trustees and some of the people who live in this town. She acknowledges the negativity, but she emphasized all the positive work that she's doing. Well, at the same time, now it's time to clear up the mess. Cause people think that y'all gonna get away with all the defamation of character and all the negativity stuff. You've seen me do none of that to any of them. None of it. Cause I don't play like that. I'm busy. I'm too busy working. I'm too busy going to knock on doors and get money and bring back to my community. And your knowledge is the presence of negativity and criticism, but emphasizes the positive work that's being done in the village. She showed videos. She highlighted all these initiatives and all the progress she's been making. I'm talking about what happened in the police and the fire department and hosting many community events. She is pushing the narrative that everything is just fine. And these other trustees, these detractors are giving her a hard time from doing the job as mayor. But by the way, she's doing a great job, according to her. She discusses various community engagement activities and services provided to the residents. A lot of positivity, but she spent most of the time talking about the negative stuff. She says she gets attacked because she cannot and will not be controlled by people that thought that she was too young or naive and thought they can walk all over her. Okay, I don't think that's a problem, but okay. In this narrative, she is trying to position herself as the resilient figure dedicated to the betterment of her community, despite all of the challenges and negative perceptions, especially content creators who are black, apparently are after her too. It's a shame that it's black on black crime. I'm already got a lot of racial stuff that come my way, but it's a shame when I got to fight my own people. It's like, dang, every night. Throughout this meeting, there were moments of contention, moments that could just be on a reality TV show, especially between the mayor and the trustees, focusing on issues like fiscal responsibility, transparency, and the impact of budget cuts on village services and resident welfare. 
So the, the sad part about this, the, the sniping back and forth, is only hurting the people who live in this village. And why so many people have so many issues with Tiffany Hayard. We could do a little bit of a recap of some of the things, but there's accusations of illegal salary increases. Hanyer has been accused of illegally increasing a salary, violating the principle of equal protection of the law as salaries of elected officials must be identity blind and not change based on the person holding the job. It's also Hanyer's administration has been criticized for controversial appointments and firings, hiring her friends, giving them exorbitant amounts of money and salary, hiring sex offenders to work. It's a lot of problems. And obviously spending money, going to Vegas, spending $150,000 on a Chevy Tahoe, mismanaging the town's funds. The meeting also dwells into more contentious topics like the village financials and proposed budget. There's a debate over budget cuts with specific line items being scrutinized, reflecting a significant reduction in funds allocated to essential services like public safety and maintenance. The mayor passionately defend her position against these cuts, emphasizing the importance of maintaining services, and she questions the morale behind the proposed reduction, probably because the town is in debt by millions of dollars. Accusations pointing to you, mayor, of recklessly spending the village funds. Maybe that's the reason why there need to be cuts. The discussions also touched on the property tax levies, which motions to maintain or increase taxes. The mayor vetoed a proposal, citing procedural issues and a need for greater transparency and community involvement and decision-making, which is kind of hilarious. And then as usual, the trustees and the mayor engage in heated exchanges over these things. Y'all too busy doing a smear campaign. And all you gotta do is call if y'all wanted any type of information, any but no one calls my phone. We get to a board meeting and we sit here for hours going back and forth over, you said this, we doing this, this was going on. This current group that is constructed of mayor and her and her team, obviously the trustees who don't agree with her, this isn't working. This group needs to break apart somehow. Some people need to move. And I think a lot of us know who should be moved first, but this, the way this is currently constructed does not help the people of Delta. And the reason why it's so dysfunctional, oh, everything points to the leadership, points to the person at the top, the CEO, the boss, the mayor, this is her fault. We don't know all the personal issues because obviously this is a very small town. They may know each other. There are probably more things unsaid that we don't know, but this does not work. This is not working. Some people need to leave for more qualified individuals to come in and clean this stuff up. There'll never be trust. There will never be understanding. I think the mayor will always have issues with these trustees, the ones who probably voted or supported recalling her. She will never see them as people that, she, that can help. And she's going to do everything in her power to make things as messy and as unproductive as possible to label them as bad guys because they label her as bad guys. So this is a toxic circle and something needs to give, something needs to change. But what'd you guys think about this uh, meeting? I'll put the link in the description below. It was messy as hell. Um, it, this cannot sustain long term. And I just saw everyone that was in that meeting how exhausted, frustrated. This is not something that helps the people of Dalton. It, it just seems like a really big mess. Well, tell me some of your highlights. What did you learn? Did you learn anything new? It looks like Tiffany is just back to her behavior. The way she speaks to people, the way she does things will not change regardless of the fact that we're in a new year of 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome back to the latest episode of What the Hell is Going On in Dalton. As we dive deeper into the unfolding drama in Dalton, Illinois, there's a critical aspect of this saga that we need to spotlight in this video right now. The ramifications of promoting police officers who have failed their exams. Yes, I am not joking. This decision by Super Mayor Tiffany Hayard isn't just a blip on an administrative radar. This is a move with far reaching and potentially grave consequences. So let's get into it. So I received this email talking about this story on Facebook and I could not believe my eyeballs. But seriously, I really can't say that because at this point, there's nothing that could surprise me when it comes to the super mayor. So thank you to that special person who sent that message to me on Facebook. Dalton's dangerous gamble, promoting unqualified police officers, threaten community safety. In a shocking display of regard for the safety and well-being of the community, the mayor of Dalton, Illinois has made a perilous decision to promote new police officers who have failed to pass the police exam. To add insult to injury, the mayor bypassed the officer with the highest score, raising serious questions about the competency and the integrity of the promotion process. The cornerstone of any functional and just society is a law enforcement system that is both effective and accountable. By bringing in officers who have not met the minimum requirements, I'm sorry, minimum qualifications, the mayor is jeopardizing the safety of the citizens in Dalton. Policing requires a high level of expertise, training, and ethical conduct, and cutting corners in the recruitment process puts the entire community at risk. 
I'm going to put the link to this article, a link to this story in the description box below. But that is, that's crazy. Imagine you're living in Dalton, a community like many others where folks rely on the police for safety and order. Now think about what happens when the officers patrolling your streets and responding to your emergencies are those who could not pass the basic requirements of their job. This is not just unsettling. This is downright alarming. But first, if you are unfamiliar with Tiffany Hayard, let's do a quick recap. So there's a lot of tension with Mayor Hanyard and the village trustees. Many of the trustees have been battling Hanyard tooth and nail for many years. Department heads are told not to give us information and to see the mayor, then that's where we're at right now. Okay, so that's not a true statement. And if they tell you to see me about something or whatever, you guys can call my phone and get it resolved. But we could play this game because I don't understand why y'all not paying an attorney, but you guys want your attorney, but don't want to pay the village attorney. Even in attempting to initiate a recall, which was shut down in court, but why are they going into such extreme measures to take her down, you may ask? Well, as it turns out, Henry administration has been criticized by using Dalton police as her private security and blocking access to vital financial information. We, we have to operate as a village. And if they continue to spend money that we don't have, it has to come from somewhere. They want to spend our money and they want our vote and don't want to tell us what they're spending the money on. We've been locked out of our office. We've been locked out of systems, but guess what? We're still here. We're still gonna try to do the, we're still gonna do the work for the people. And if that wasn't enough, you add some financial drama into the mix. We're talking allegations of fraud and financial impropriety. Reports indicate that Hayer has been playing fast and loose with the village checkbook. She's been accused of issuing checks with only her signature, bypassing necessary approvals, a clear violation of state law and village code. That's why there's a lawsuit there. So according to the village trustees, Henyard's spending habits have plunged Dalton into some serious debt. We just look up and we're paying for stuff and it just makes no sense. She's just doing what she wants. WGN investigates obtained copies of statements that reveal village officials have spent more than $24,000 at restaurants in just one year. We're not talking about small change here. There's claims that Dalton has $7 million in the red. Hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars are reportedly spent on security, taking police officers off the streets, and a lot of other things, like a really nice tie hole that costs about $150,000. When at the end of the day, you're making decisions and spending money and then get mad when we don't approve it because it's not financially staffed. I sat here and looked at a lease that child's paying $149,000 for one of them trucks. You make absolute, that's like when you 19 years old and you go get a car and the interest rate 27%. That makes absolutely no sense. You're please not making facts. great finance, excuse me? Please stay facts. But let me tell you, here it is, dated December 27th, 2022, the cash price of a 2023 Chevy Tahoe, $93,216.71. Interest in APR, $55,929.49. Total lease price, $149,146.20. Tell me if it's not facts, because your signature is all on it. This is a scenario that has a lot of residents and officials and people all across the country ringing alarm bells about the town's financial health and public safety. Many people are accusing Super Mayor Tiffany Hayes leadership style, comparing her to a dictator. Trustee Norwood even goes as far as to say that working with Hayer feels like a mentally abusive relationship. So this is not just about dollars and cents. This is about the morale and the well-being of those who task with overseeing Dalton's finances. But let's get back into the whole police thing. So if you guys checked out the last board meeting that the Dalton trustees and the mayor had, she was celebrating the newly minted police officers. The problem is that there's a lot of reports coming out that some of those police officers did not pass important exams. This isn't just about a few extra badges being handed out. It's about the foundation of public trust in law enforcement. And a lot of people do not trust the law enforcement right now. Whether good or bad, that's just what's happening right now. Police exam, just like any other exam, serves as a crucial filter, ensuring that those with the necessary skills, knowledge, and temperament wear the uniform. And when this filter is bypassed, it's not just a procedural hiccup. This is a fundamental breach in the system that's supposed to help us. This is some serious real life implications in this. First, 
There's the issue of competency. Policing is a complex, high stakes job that demands a deep understanding of law, critical thinking, and the ability to make split second decisions in life or death situations. An officer who hasn't passed the exam may lack these skills, which can lead to dire outcomes out there on the streets. Then there's the issue of accountability and morale within the force. Imagine a police officer who studied, passed the exams, upheld standards only to see colleagues who didn't make the grade get promoted. It's a slap in the face to those who take their duties seriously, which could lead to a demoralized and divided police force. And this is where some of the reports are saying that there's certain people who scored higher that did not receive the promotion, did not receive these jobs. Why? What is really going on here? Moreover, this decision can open the door to legal and ethical dilemmas. When officers who haven't met the basic requirements are involved in incidents and situation, it's not just their actions that are going to be scrutinized, their entire decision-making process that put them on the streets in the first place. This could lead to legal battles, erosion of public trust, and a tainted reputation of the Dalton Police Department. And this is probably the most chilling and sad consequence when it comes to public safety. Anytime a Dalton resident calls for help, there'll be a lingering doubt about the capability of the responding officers. It's a scenario that could deter people from seeking help when they need it the most, leaving the community vulnerable and fearful. The first question I can ask is why? It just seems like the mayor finds any way to grab people who like her or people she wants to influence and give them things. That's the only thing I can think of, of why would you not promote one police officer even if they had the, a higher score, maybe that person didn't vote for Tiffany Hayard or not, doesn't support her. She does run things like a mafia. They take care of people who take care of them. Those that don't take care of them, they're not going to bother with them at all. Like I said earlier, nothing is surprising to me anymore when it comes to this mayor and the things that she's doing. The only thing we can do is continue to report what's going on. She's getting more national attention. We need to continue to hold her accountable for these actions and keep a really long catalog of all the things that she's doing that are wrong. Because this is hurting the people who live in Dalton, Illinois. I want people to know that I'm caring. Tiffany Henyard told me in November she cares. Apparently so much so, it's also the name of her charity. WGN Investigates has learned a suburban politician's charity has attracted the attention of the Illinois Attorney General after failing to file financial documents. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back we're gonna be talking about Tiffany Hayer's charity. Is it possible for someone to be this bad at their job? To be this greedy? To get everything wrong? It's getting to a point where I just feel like, is this real? Is this some kind of, like what's happening here? Is this a big joke? Like, is this a big punked episode or something? Like what is going on here? Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So Tiffany Hayer's charity formed in her name focusing on help cancer patients has attracted the attention of the, the Illinois Attorney General for not filing required financial documents. It just seems like the MO for Tiffany A. Hager not to disclose her financials, to find ways to hide what she is doing. It's a pattern. Expenses. WGN Investigates obtained this letter from December in which the Illinois Attorney General threatened civil penalties are imposed against persons who do not register with this office as required. That's Keith Freeman sitting next to her at a Dalton meeting where he's the village administrator. Freeman is also an advisor to Thornton Township and he's the guy listed as the registered agent of Tiffany Henyard's foundation. You guys all know who Henyard is. She holds two elected positions as Dalton Mayor and Thornton Township Supervisor. So she's making that, what, $300,000 every year. Pretty nice. So in 2022, in the same year, she founded her charity. This charity received a significant amount of money. So despite promoting her charity through many events, Hanyon has failed to submit financial statements to show how the funds have been used to benefit cancer patients. Cause that's the whole point of the charity. Correct? So a lot of people think that this money was probably not used correctly. A lot of criticisms have been raised about the potential misuse of public money for charity events. Records indicate taxpayer money was used for a cancer walk and other expenses like hotel rooms. They say board members were asked to approve a $10,000 payment to the foundation in 2022, days before a much publicized cancer walk from Dalton to Springfield. Thornton Township credit card records show taxpayers then footed the bill for more than $10,000 in hotel rooms along the route. Again, it's like moth to flame, just constantly doing the wrong thing. The wrong thing is that fire and the moth just, just keeps getting burned. It's quite comical, actually. The Illinois Attorney General has threatened legal penalties for the charity's non-compliance. 
Hanyer and her advisor did not respond to requests, obviously. Any financial records sought under the FOIA Act has not been released. The Attorney General is considering further action, including fines and the removal of the foundation's offices. I guess we'll just stack this with another one of Tiffany Hanyer's greatest hits, the financial mismanagement. Oh, until last month, we were receiving monthly financial reports. This month, we did not receive a monthly financial report. Last fiscal year through May, the deficit was 2.5 million in our operating account. This year through the report we got, which was September 30th, I pulled that up as you were speaking. So from May through September, there was an additional $4.2 million of deficit. So you couple those two together, the deficit is growing and it's approaching 7 million. The luxury lifestyle. WGN investigates obtained copies of statements that reveal village officials have spent more than $24,000 at restaurants in just one year. Other questionable expenses include the streaming service Hulu, flights to Texas, Alabama, and Missouri, and hotel rooms in nearby suburbs, plus thousands of dollars spent at a hotel in downstate Pontiac. And then there are the trips to Las Vegas. And the constant misuse of public funds. We've been repeatedly asking for information that's been do documented time and again about credit card statements. Um, this, this entire thing is just extremely frustrating. Right. And, and what happened to the transparency? It's like at the end of the day, I don't want us to forget that the residents are ultimately what pays all of our salaries. We haven't received credit card statements in six months. We haven't gotten the electronic warrant list, but yet we're supposed to vote on it. We haven't gotten factual information about the tax increase. This is for transparency, so we can be transparent, so we can know what we're paying for. That weird salary maneuver where if she leaves the job, the job is $25,000 a year, but if she stays, she continues to earn Damn near three hundred thousand dollars. Some say is a sneaky move to keep a controversial township supervisor in power. In part two of our investigative series, the mayor of Dalton, who is also the Thornton Township supervisor, cements her salary with a last-minute vote. So she signed a new law to make sure that she continues to make as much money for her and her cronies. Tiffany Hayard recently passed a controversial law for elected officials. This law is criticized for being self-serving and unlawful. This law, designed in such a way that the current office holders, including Hayard, will continue to receive significantly larger salaries and benefits compared to the newly elected officials. Yes, that's actually is happening. Compared to what the newly elected officials would receive. For instance, while a newly elected township supervisor will get $25,000 annually, Hayard, if re-elected, will continue to receive over $260,000. In all the legal actions and lawsuits, and always also in hiring a close friends, even some that have really terrible criminal histories. About 20 Dalton residents and a couple trustees protest outside Village Hall today, furious after a Fox 32 investigation found this registered child sex offender on the public payroll. A sex offender, you don't give them carte blanche to go into different people homes. 46-year-old Lavelle Redman is close friends with Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard, who in September hired Redman as a code enforcement officer without the village board's approval. To work for her so they can earn exorbitant salaries. This is going to be a very interesting year for Tiffany Henyard. I can feel it. Two main things have happened. Accountability is coming. We're all waiting to see when the shoe drops. Is that what's called? The shoe drops? Or the other shoe to drop? I don't know. Whatever the saying is, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the FBI to truly come in and handle business and stand on business because this needs to stop. I could not believe it when I saw this photo a couple of days ago. I thought it had to be Photoshopped. There is no way that our super mayor, Tiffany Hayer, with all of the problems that are happening in Dalton, there's no way she can be in Washington, D.C. However, I've seen more pictures and I've seen this TikTok posted by Tiffany Hayard herself that showed that she enjoyed herself hanging out with President Biden. She was in a special event where the president met many of the mayors of our fine country and there she was doing her thing. Extremely, extremely, extremely happy. I'm gonna play you her TikTok now. I have changed the sound uh, and the music of that TikTok for something that's more appropriate. And obviously I don't wanna deal with any copyright strikes. I think I found the more appropriate music to play for our super mayor, Tiffany Hayard. Let's check it out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm here at the White House. Yes, I'm the Yes, I'm here to Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to working with you. Yes, that part. Um, but yeah, this is a Unbelievable. Thank you guys. Love you. Thanks. Very happy. Good As you can see, Tiffany Hayard, super, super, super excited to be there in the White House, hanging out with Joe Biden. I tell you, I was watching a live stream with Charwayne Burns. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Um, she's been doing a lot of great work, breaking down some of the issues with the mayor and breaking down the issues with Keith Freeman. I think I definitely need to talk about him as well. But this video is about how excited she is. And the reason why I brought up Chanel is because she said something in a live stream yesterday that I find to really make sense. This person wants to be a celebrity. This person wants to be famous. Look how excited she is. She's excited. She finally made it. In her mind, she made it. She's there hanging out with the president, hanging out with other mayors. I saw a picture of another fantastic mayor of Chicago, and I'm being totally sarcastic here, but hanging out with politicians, the most powerful people in the country, and look at her, super excited. She finally, finally made it which I find to be a little interesting, the fact that she is there traveling, using the town's money to go to Washington DC and act like a big shot. But she seems so happy considering that she's the mayor of Dalton, millions of dollars of debt, dysfunction, there's no trust, people are fighting each other. I mean, look at these town hall meetings she's having with the trustees, unprofessional, toxic environment, but she is so excited to hang out with President Joe. Biden. I think the most important thing for Tiffany Hayard is her to be famous, for her to be seen. Look at all the billboards that's around Dalton. Check out all the graphics. Anything that's coming out of the village of Dalton, the, the administration, is her face on it with her hair done, her makeup done, nails done, letting everyone know she is a star. She's the most important person in the town of Dalton. And this is the reason why she's having so many issues. She doesn't understand that this is not a reality show. This is not Parks and Rec. You are an official hired by the people to do a job. It's not about you. But it seems like she's not understanding it. And look at her. I mean, I've seen her in the last couple of council meetings, not smiling really, not really happy, very angry. But look at her face there. She's the happiest that you could possibly be. And it's interesting with the whole idea of being invited. You could tell that the White House betting isn't up to snuff, or maybe they don't even care as long as the person is a Democrat or whatever, whatever side that the president is on, as long as you on that side, you can come in despite all the news reports. I mean, anyone in the White House could have did, I don't know, a simple Google search to see the amount of issues that Tiffany Hayard has got herself into with the spending of the money, the lack of transparency, locking people out of important information, hiring sex offenders for jobs, hooking up all of her friends with really good salary positions while vendors are not getting paid, while the town is falling deeper and deeper into debt. She's out there living a the high life in Washington, D.C. So I couldn't believe it when I saw this TikTok. I saw those photos earlier and I thought, wow, this is not a good look. But she's actually there smiling, hanging out with them while the village adulted is suffering and trying to figure out how to pay for the things they need to get done. So. What do you guys think about this? If you were the mayor and you had this many issues, this much debt, should you even take the time to go meet the president? Maybe, I don't know. I know meeting a president is supposed to be a big deal. I don't care. It doesn't matter who's in office. It just doesn't seem all that interesting to me. Is it possible that the super mayor is talking to some people, trying to get some business, trying to get some money to come back to Dalton? Maybe, probably not. Seems like it's just a lot of selfies, a lot of dancing, TikToking right there showing everyone how she is doing fantastic while the rest of people in Dalton 
suffer. I mean, if you are a resident of Dalton, how would you feel? While there's certain things that are not getting done, we're still waiting on certain things to be taken care of. And you see her hanging out with politicians, rubbing elbows with politicians. What happened to that poor woman that's trying to build something special for the community and of Dalton, and she can't get it done because of the super mayor and Keith Freeman blocking her path while she is actually trying to uplift the community. We're here to create a hub of resources and services for the community that would support the community at a greater capacity. And so we just wanna know why, why we're not getting the support that we should. I really believe that the reason this is happening is because they they want me to lose the property. They want me to uh, not be able to pay the taxes or pay the bills and lose the property. However, the goal for the administration, we believe, is to starve us out so that we will lose the property and they can come in and just take it. But at this point, that's not gonna happen. Imagine her watching Tiffany Hayer's TikTok to see this nonsense. I wonder how that person is feeling right now. This year is gonna be really, really interesting for this mayor. Put in the comments below what you think about this situation here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I really believe that the reason this is happening is because they, they want me to lose the property. They want me to uh, not be able to pay the taxes or pay the bills and lose the property. Um, I truly believe what God has for you is for you. What God has for me is for me. And it was clearly meant for our organization to own this property so we could do what we are wanting to do or attempting to do in the community. However, the goal for the administration, we believe, is to starve us out so that we will lose the property and they can come in and just take it. But at this point, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, um, the mayor of Dalton blocks growth in Dalton. So, and this involves Keith Freeman. Everything seems to involve Keith. He's, he seems like he's everywhere. He's all over the place. Seems like he gets himself in, he has his hands and everything. So I'm gonna show you guys some of uh, the back and forth that's going on with um, Dr. Scott and what she's trying to do to what Keith Freeman is trying to do. Foot strip mall on 142nd and King Drive with a vision to revitalize the area, to create the ABBA Recreation and Resource Center. We had high hopes to be able to work with the current administration, uh, Tiffany Henyard and her uh, administration over at the Village of Dalton. However, since we closed on the property in June of 2023, we have not been able to do that. Um, we have had uh, meetings, I wrote a letter. We've made several attempts to really uh, make this work. However, we're at a standstill. Yet despite her best efforts, progress stalls. Mayor Tiffany Henyard and her administrator Keith Freeman halts her plans, denying permits crucial for community growth and development. I went and got my pastor, and he went and got Keith Freeman and another gentleman. It was supposed to be the four of us who were gonna go in together and purchase this property to uh, do some really good work in the community. I thought that that was the way to go. You know, I spoke with Keith Freeman about it, and he says, well, you know, uh, the owners have so many things that they need to do with the property, so on and so forth. Um, but the deal fell through. It didn't work. They they want me to lose the property. They want me to uh, not be able to pay the taxes or pay the bills and lose the property. I know the mayor talks about how she wants to make progress. And initially, we wanted to do that with her. However, because of their interest in the property, there has not been any assistance for us. 
So ba basically, it's it's we're not going to help give up so we can take this property and try to make as much money out of it as possible. Now, Dr. Scott is trying to build a 83,000 square foot uh, community outreach center. And the two people who are blocking it are the super mayor and Keith Freeman. As uh, super mayor likes to put on her propaganda videos during, you know, before, you know, as the meetings go on the way, she puts it in showing that she's doing this and she's building this and she's doing all these fantastic, awesome things. Uh, able to go to Washington D.C. and TikTok the entire uh, time that she's hanging out there, and this person is actually doing some um, amazing work trying to build and uplift the community, and they are in her way. It's pretty sad to see someone trying to figure something out, and because it looks like Keith Freeman is involved with this property deal, that he does not want uh, her to have it. I mean, what other reason for this to continue? Um, I don't know if Dr. Scott was. Uh, does, did she say anything about uh, the super mayor in the past? It looks like, you know, Tiffany does tend to use the police to provide some level of intimidation to people who don't vote for her or who criticize her in the past. You can see how she's treating the other trustees, not, you know, canceling meetings. The way the meetings go back and forth, very contentious, very nasty, the way um, she talks to the trustees. Sometimes even Keith Freeman. You guys can check out the, I'm sure the next, the next meeting, Cherry, let me know uh, what when is the next meeting that uh, the the mayor is going to be there. Uh, maybe I'll live stream it. it. You know, it's very very intense, and it's a lot of you know lecturing and finger wagging coming from the the mayor. And then the Keith Freeman kind of jumps in, and you know, just like what the individual investor said, he is the side like the, he is the the the, the side chick if you want to use that term, the side dude. Negotiations for public works that they wasn't paying it into May 1st of 2024, which is the next fiscal year. So if you have this money allocated in the 2024, 2025 budget, but you don't plan on paying them to 2025, 2026 budget, then why is it allocated in there? So if you're going to say that the 6.8, the appropriation, then that means that everything that he read in October should be in there, too, since we're talking about transparency and all these grants. So that should be in there also. And those are not being reflected in there. Are you done? Yes. All right. Go ahead, Keith. Um, was that was that a question that you were asking whether or not it was reflected or is that a statement that you were making? That's a question. Because I believe that it's reflected in the six point eight million dollars. It's not individually broke out, but you didn't ask us to individually break it out, nor did you ask a question about that. So I think the first thing is, is before you make an assumption on a budget, you should probably ask the question. I'm not assuming anything. I'm just, I'm just going based off yes, of what you is. just said. <laughs> so the funny. second thing is, is that I would like to know what accounting firm helped you guys put together this budget. How do you guys plan on making up for the half million dollars that we're going to lose for homewood disposal? You're not passing Stop the spending. bond later on. And... Is there any, did you guys think of anything? I mean, did you guys have any help with this? Is there anyone that helped you with this? Or are you guys just going off you guys basic is, accounting skills? Is that what a question? Learning? That's a question. Are you going off what you learned in college? <laughs> is this <laughs> something that you learned in, in, in day camp? Agreeing with everything that she's saying, showing no, no ability to say, hey, this is a bad idea. Maybe we should do this or do that. It looks like they're just together to continue to do whatever they want to do. Um, professor, what you say? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's just uh, someone used the t uh, the reality show Parks and Rec to compare uh, this situation, the way Tiffany, uh, the way Mayor Tiffany Hayer uses social media, and she wants to get as famous as possible. Like I said, I've never seen someone so happy when they went to the White House and had that TikTok, and she's smiling and taking pictures. It just seems like, well, you know, the way she looked, it seemed like she had everything in order back home. Like everything is in order. Everything is running smoothly. Everyone is getting uh, along as best as possible. The vendors are getting paid. Everything is transparent. I can go out and enjoy myself in Washington, D.C. And that's like the total opposite. Like everything is all screwed up. Like how are you even out there smiling? It's kind of hilarious. A really good question here. Um, can you tell me how American politics allow this to happen? I'm from Canada. If my mayor did this, people would be trying to get them removed right away. They, they've tried to remove. So they have they had recalls. There was an issue with the recall where they tried to put the referendum to recall and then the recall vote in the same election. I think uh, obviously the the judge, the, the courts deemed that that was not, uh, I guess, something you can do uh, and that that recall failed. But in terms of American politics, 
I mean, I think it's, it's I feel like it's, it's based just, it's based on human nature in, in, in some aspects of people trying to get as much power as possible. Um, the people who have the most resources command the most power. And once money is involved, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or even millions of dollars are involved, you will notice people flipping and doing things to ensure they get as much of those resources as possible. Also, you have to th also have to think of or think about who wants to be a politician or a CEO of a company or who wants those powerful positions. Usually the people who get those powerful positions have the kind of personality of wanting to be the best to be the strongest person in the room, to have that type A personality. And if you're a type A personality, but you also are uh, unethical and you don't care about hurting over the next person, this is where it comes to be. And I think that's where American politics is. The corporations run the country. They have the money. They have the influence, the lobbyists. And the politicians are just kind of dancing to who gives them the most money or has the most influence. Because at this point, if you want to be elected to anything, you need money. You need lots of it. I mean, some of the campaign costs here in our country is ridiculous. Like there's billionaires pumping millions of dollars into a candidate. And, and there'd be no way for this person to come up with that kind of funds on their own or even do it, you know, crowdfunding the people in the community. So that's where it is. I mean, that's a, I guess it's a long-winded answer that American politics has a lot of issues and and for some odd reason, the state of Illinois, and I'm sorry, guys, but it's a lot of a long history of corruption and corruption is everywhere. It's everywhere, but it's a lot of corruption. And it just seems like it's a weird pattern of the certain type of person who decides to be a mayor or a senator or, you know, like it's always something or a governor. Like it's something where he definitely uh, goes the wrong way. Dresses as Neil Brown. Yeah, that was that. That's probably the one video that kind of grabbed me into this story when I started doing videos on her. But the gall, like the, the audacity to go into a meeting and, and act like you're Nino Brown and not have the, like the self-awareness to realize like Nino Brown was a crack dealer. Like he was a crack dealer that took over a projects in New York City to sell crack and have people in the, the worst positions ever. It, it wasn't, he wasn't a hero. He wasn't a, like a politician. He wasn't a mayor. He was a crack dealer that was making millions of dollars a week. So it doesn't make sense. So why would she decide to cosplay as Nino Brown? It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, Aaron has the, yeah, yeah. Well, it was just done. It was like, it's, it's a technicality, basically, right? I mean, and, they, and that recall did have, I think it had 56%. Like it, it had enough people to say, yeah, yeah, get this person out of here. I don't think this is working out. You could find political drama in any small town. Yes, Giggity. And I've been realizing that now since I've done a few of these videos based on um, the you know mayor, super mayor and others, that there is a lot of mayors doing terrible stuff. It's kind of baffling. And, it's, you know, obviously it's not, you know, I'm sure it probably is major cities, but small cities in America where people are just like ripping everyone off. Aaron says, if we find out they're dating, does this turn into a Rico case? Interesting. Interesting. Um, I believe she has a dude, and I think the dude is on the payroll, if I if I remember correctly. So everyone is getting paid. It's it's like a mob. It's like a, you know those criminalizations. You you know you 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 bring your your people. You bring your your, your folks, regardless if they are qualified. Clearly, because Keith Freeman is he's not qualified for that job. Um, and then also Tiffany Hayard hiring a sex offender. Why? Because that's her friend. She didn't bother to check a background check or any background check. And he's, oh, that's my, that's my, my homeboy. Bring him in despite the fact that he had, um, you know, a sexual offender. Like, no, it just, does, it just, so certain things she, she does to make sure that her people are taken care of and the people who are against her, she, she does what she does. Yeah. Uh, talking about the you know, own security force where millions of dollars to protect her. And, and I know now with her, I know she will complain and say, well, all the lies that have been talked about about me, uh, especially people who look like me. She said this in the last uh, meeting that she was there. You know, basically assinuating that you know, Black people are either the content creators or people who just talk and criticizing her, that we take turn her, turn her down and that's supposed to be our people, some nonsense like that. But she's saying that she probably needs the protection now because a lot of her misdeeds are national now or international at this point. I mean, I was, when I saw the last uh, big meeting when she was there, I mean, those people in that live stream shot from everywhere like Jamaica, like everywhere. Cause this story is, it's kind of hard to believe that this is happening, you know? 
actually now we want to know what is going on and if these things are true he should not be hired he should be let go and in fact it, the days that he's still there just hurts the super mayor more they just did um the day people asking why the feds haven't jumped they won't go in until they know they can stick football numbers then they'll go after everyone yeah i, th I mean once they got enough to where they could just go storming in then yeah th then the you know the indictments are coming in you know that things will get really really um she's not you know the super mayor is not gonna have a good time when the feds come in the feds don't play uh either even if you like you like you know, the fbi or not you know let's see yes the feds the feds are always watching the feds are always watching let's see yeah and that's another a good comment from professor everyone is making yeah it is is it is like a it's a it's a hustle they're hustling the people of dalton of how of what they're doing how they even just able to just snatch all these resources to travel the country to set up fake charities to buy these luxury vehicles to hold hold someone that's trying to do something positive for her community hold that property hostage um, waiting for her to quit so they can uh, snoop up and take it. it it seemed like what happened was it's kind of similar to me and devil eggs if you leave a, a, a plate of devil eggs and say guarded it's going to be uh, it's hard for me to not take one i think what happened is with freeman and, and tiffany hayard here they were entrusted with all of this resources and money and since they are have criminal histories of at least with Keith Freeman, theft, and obviously with actually with her too, breaking into a property, going into places that they don't you know don't belong to her, properties that she doesn't belong to. They went crazy. They went absolutely insane. And when other people, you know, other the trustees said, "Hey, uh, what's going on with the money? Like, what's happening here? Like, hey, you stop giving us receipts and transactions. What's what's going on? Does the vendors are asking for money? We can't pay lawyers. What's up?" And then she just, you know, lock, everything locked down. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to be really condescending and rude to you every time we speak. And that's the current state of what's going on. Are you a victim of the dysfunction in Dalton? Absolutely. But more so, residents are victims. Now, Tiffany puts on a good front. She she puts on a good front. She comes off as, you know, she could be likable. She tells a good story. So once Tiffany started getting, you know, like some press and, you know, people say, oh, my God, she's the first woman to do this. Oh, my God, she's the youngest to do that. And now she's the shiny new kid on the block to the world of the media. She yep. started to forget the people who helped her get there. So um, Alton Daniels, uh, he has two channels. He has that one and he has like the millionaire show. And he had an interview with the former chief of staff uh, of you know, Super Mayor Tiffany Hayard. And it was really insightful, some of the things that she was bringing up in terms of her personality, how she was before, or at least the, the transformation of how she's behaving now compared to the past. And I thought it was a pretty good um, interview. So let's show, let's put the one right now. Now, Tiffany puts on a good front. She she puts on a good front. She comes off as, you know, she could be likable. She tells a good story. She tells a good game. So when she got with that team, they were like the dream team. She's like, all right, listen, we're going to do some change. You know, we don't, you know, we're going to work together and, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Now, where it gets tricky is Tiffany has a habit of being a little power struck. So once Tiffany started getting, you know, like some press and, you know, people say, oh, my God, she's the first woman to do this. Oh, my God, she's the youngest to do that. And now she's the shiny new kid on the block to the world of the media. She yep. started to forget the people who helped her get there, yeah. which was those trustees. And not just her trustees have the same issue. She had a team of people that were out with her passing petitions out there with, um, you know, putting out, you know, campaign literature, giving their time, keep in mind for free to help her get into this place, you know? And, and that, when you see her, that, that's what is interesting that I saw this, uh, uh, before, before I saw this interview, it, that, that's what kind of came to me. It just seemed like someone that's very, very into being that reality TV star. They want to be like a Parks and Rec. They want to have someone they want. She wants a reality show, I, I bet you. I bet you that Supermare wants a, a reality show following her around do, with her life. The fact that she has, she puts a lot of emphasis on her appearance, it shows that that's what she wants to do. And again, going back to the video with her, with her going to the White House to meet the, the president, so excited, happy.
taking pictures of everything, doing the whole selfie thing. I love, I love you guys. This is great. You can tell this is what she really wants to do. But when you have that power is when you really see a person's true self, right? When you give someone something of substantial in terms of resources of money, how do they behave, right? Compared to when they, like you, have a, you could have an asshole, an asshole with a million dollars is terrible, right? But in terms of like, that's why if, when they have that kind of money, they do certain things that exacerbates, like it, it kind of, it basically extends their personality forward when you, are, when you have resources or you have something powerful to use and, and at your disposal. Um, and then we, another clip of her just talking more, or more about how she changed. She kind of cold switched. So the people so really she, believed in her. Like they really yeah, believed they that she was going to get in there and do a good job and everything. Yeah. I mean, and, you, and here's the thing. And I, and I will go on record and say this. The Tiffany that we see today, that is not the Tiffany from two years ago. Ah, right? What was she no. like two years ago? See, two years ago, she was like, you know, she was green. Let's, she's always been a little green. But that girl on that picture right there at the bottom, that was Tiffany two years mm. ago. Not mm. the glam, not the, you know, she was, I mean, low-key cool. She had some areas that you can work on, but now she's been empowered to believe she's the most powerful woman in, in the Southland, when the reality of the matter is Thornton Township is a platform for government assistance. It's literally a big public aid office for the community. The Thornton Township is literally where you go for a financial assistance. So mm -hmm. why she believe that that makes her the most powerful woman in the South Side? Let me tell you why. Any person that will believe that the Thornton Township supervisor position makes you the most powerful person is if you're using it for malicious. Oh, oh, I, damn, I missed, I, I clipped it off. Yeah, I mean, it's it's supposed to help people but if you are taking the resources for yourself, then you're just doing the complete opposite of helping people. You're just robbing people. You're taking advantage of people. Um, it's not based on her trying to, again, it's a community thing, but you only flying across the world. Actually, do I have that video? Um, we could put that on YouTube uh, with WGN talking about $67,000 was spent traveling. I mean, I would like to know how much the the mayor of New York City has spent in a year. Like, I don't, I mean, I know Eric, he went, Eric Adams went to the White House, but I don't know if he went, he could be. I mean, also, you know, it's two different, I mean, obviously New York City mayor's 8 million people, but if it's comparable, right? Like I say, if, if, if Eric Adams spent $100,000 uh, traveling, Tiffany shouldn't be nowhere near that. Again, I don't even know, I'm just throwing out numbers. But $67,000 to travel? What, why? What, what are you doing? We'll show that video as well. But she she really got into, she really feeling herself, right? I mean, uh, I mean, it has to. Let's see. Um, let me show one more about why Nakia decided to, like, this is not working. This is just, this is just not working out for her, what, what she's trying to do. And I'm like, she's sitting here and then she'll probably come back and say, Biden, say I'm the best mayor ever. When the reality is he probably didn't even remember the conversation you all had. Absolutely. And not. <laughs> so it's like you out here looking for selfies yeah. when, you know, you need to be here in your town looking how to balance this budget because you in a red. Did you, um, what was some of the red flags that you would notice? Her um, mouth. Really? Her mouth. So Tiffany has a very disrespectful mouth. So the stuff that you see with the trustees, and this is where it went down. I'm going to just tell you. And this can be verified because I put it in my letter of resignation that day. Did she has you? A, oh, listen. We almost got into a fist fight. So her mouth is extremely disrespectful. So at the time, my father-in-law had fell gravely ill. Okay. And he was in, he lived in uh, Michigan. So my husband and I had to drive to Michigan literally every weekend, keep in mind weekend, to go check on him. That's mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. Tiffany's the type that wants you to work for her, have your phone on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I have literally received calls at one o'clock in the morning for flyers. She mm -hmm. runs her, her staff like a dictatorship. And then when you don't do what she say, she'll tell you she's going to fire you. That didn't work for me because I didn't work 
Keep in mind, I came on as a publicist, which means I'm an entrepreneur. Right. Sis, I don't need that 50 something thousand dollars that you I ain't gonna say I don't need it. Let me let me be clear. No, no, no. I, I understand what you're saying. Money, but that wasn't motivating me. I have yeah. other sources yeah. of income. So what she usually do is she go get people who need the money that she's paying them so she can kind of use them as puppets. She can control and then them. she'll yeah, so she'll tell you, if you don't do what you say, you're, I'm going to fire you. I'm going to fire you. I'm going to fire you. So back to my father-in-law. So my father-in-law is falling sick, so I had to go down you know, out of town a lot on the weekends. This is not through Monday to Friday. However, she wanted to do an event during this time. So at the time, I told her I can't make the event, but I put her all the way at third base. You have a team of other people. Here you go, sis. Let them work it out, things like that. Now, I am, I know I'm good at my job, and she did want me around, and sometimes she just did not trust other people to deliver. I get all that, but guess what? Right now, I'm on my husband's time, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he's the number one priority in my life, ma'am. She want to go kick 100%. 100%. Um, but I like that comment about she, and that, that's, that's people who are, who are really good at manipulating. You 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 don't deal with the person who can that has all the options. You you get people who need something, money, uh, you know, notoriety, whatever it is, and you able to hold that over their heads. So I think she's you know this mayor is just drunk on power. Um, w Jan investigates the price of politics in the South suburbs. Last hour we showed you how a politician and her team spent tens of thousands of dollars on fine dining, first class flights, and a five star hotel. Investigative reporter Ben Bradley with one woman's story of what happened to her and her mission when she crossed the self proclaimed super mayor. Hey guys, it's your favorite super mayor! <laughs> Not only is Tiffany Henyard the Thornton Township supervisor, she's also the mayor of Dalton. You gotta make any food, this what you need. Henyard hosts and promotes food giveaways throughout the year. You put the meat in the box that you pull up because it's on two different pallets. I want to show you guys that I love y'all and ain't nothing you can do about it. Here, put that over there. One person okay, not this. feeling the love is Nicole Scott. Are you a victim of the dysfunction in Dalton? Absolutely, but more so residents are victims. Would you like some of these? She runs the Free Indeed Market, a ministry-minded pantry set up like a grocery store. It's meant to give people in need a bit of dignity. We have some onions here if you need onions. Scott says she secured funding and architectural plans to redevelop this entire dilapidated shopping center last summer. But the village did nothing with her application for six months. She kept a log of her increasingly desperate demands for a response. What has stopped this? I don't know. I don't know. Whenever we go over to the village, we don't get a response. When Scott recently went public with her frustrations with the mayor and her team, she said she received an angry phone call from the village administrator and a written response saying her plans were insufficient. She'd have to start over. Don't want to be in politics, but I was told that when I purchased this huge property that I was automatically in politics. But that's not the goal at all. The goal is to serve the community in a greater capacity. So there you are. I filed the lawsuit because I am a victim of retaliation. As we reported in November, Henyard's administration has been repeatedly accused of targeting political opponents. Just this week, her former police chief sued the village, claiming Henyard discharged Chief Collins simply because his wife is friendly with some individuals who Henyard believes to be political opponents. She's also been accused of using cops to intimidate. She used her entire police force to come in and prevent something from happening because Things didn't go her way, really. Would you like some pool pork? What okay. confounds Nicole Scott is that she was apolitical until enduring six months of silence from Village Hall. In a community where 20% of residents live below the poverty level, Scott's plans to expand her ministry through development remain shell. They know that this thrift store would bring in the revenue that we need to keep our programs and services going and without the permits without the business license we're not able to do that well thank you for shopping with us <laughs> mayor henyard has previously denied claims that she targets her of course she's denying the claims uh just it this is just it's disgusting when you really think about it um it's just it's kind of hard to keep trying to figure out more words to kind of construct to understand like how someone this bad at everything that they're doing 
Like even this doesn't look good on on her or Keith Freeman. Like you're stopping this um, this operation that can really help people who are suffering. Going back to talking about New York City, where you know there's food pantry lines every, around the block. We all suffering through some of these this crazy inflationary times with the economic times. People need help. People need resources. And if there's someone here that can actually help in a significant way, and because you don't have you have a, some kind of issue politically or even personally to stop them from helping more people, how is that going to make you look as a mayor? And I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. And it looks like um, Keith Freeman or whatever, whoever's representing with the Keith Freeman wants that property and don't want her to have that property. Um, shout out to the Dalton trustees coming through. Um, great YouTube channel. I think what you guys are doing is is extremely important. And you guys figured out the YouTube thing pretty quickly on how to kind of package everything together. Just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, bring the receipts uh, because like what the Mayor keeps saying, uh, state the facts, please. Uh, you guys have been doing that. And, um, you know, you guys are in the fight because for real. There's other places around the country where there are corrupt mayors, governors, what you know, a, a lot of corrupt uh, politicians, and they are not helping to stop anything. They kind of go along with the situation, and with the, these trustees, they're trying to fight. They're trying to make this again, trying to put this mayor, uh, you know, under the microscope. Um. Eileen Brooks says, in order to, to get on Tiffany Good side, just keep her, yeah, keep kissing her ass. I mean, that's what it looks like. That's what it seems to be. You know, is there any evidence that she, that there's someone who is her opponent not having any problems, able to live their lives, able to build, you know, continue with their businesses, have events, or only the people who like her because she loves, and she says she loves you even if you don't. Well, it don't sound like. Even that weird statement, which I find is super creepy. I love you even if you don't. That, that's, that's weird. It weirds me out. But it doesn't seem that's even accurate. She loves you if you love her. She loves you if you take care of her in terms of making sure that you like everything she's doing and you don't give her any problems. That's when she, will, she loves you. Because um, the way she's handling everyone. No, I don't think she's, she's not loving anybody. It's weird. It's a weird thing when she says. We tell her no. It's, yeah, yeah. Definitely up. Like you have, like of course you you going you going to go through something, and I think lawsuits. You know, I mean, how many how many lawsuits that she's involved in? Actually, I should look that up. Like how many that she had to either go through? So yeah, the trustees are suing her. Um, obviously, um, uh, the what the I forgot his name it escapes me, but the one that's running running the car events, he's suing. Uh, we just saw a lawsuit, lawsuit right there in the news story. Um, that, sa that salary thing that she did, I'm sure, I'm sure maybe a lawsuit probably go for that, that salary maneuver thing where she's like, if I leave, salary drops, I don't know, 90% or 80%. But if I stay, I could keep making the 200 and something thousand. Like that has to be some kind of unconstitutional thing. A prior lawsuit is going to probably hit there. Is there any other lawsuits? There's so many. You know, probably make a video just all the lawsuits that she's involved in currently. Um, we are going to keep exposing this madness until she is out of office. Yeah. Uh, faith, you know, keep, keep the good fight going. Um, Dalton trustees. Cause, uh, she's not going to stop herself. There, there isn't, I don't think she is going to be a time where she's going to get it and realize the error of her ways or Keith Freeman realize the error of his ways. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to have to be forcibly removed voted out or otherwise because it doesn't seem like she is going to do anything right on herself or for herself you have to give respect you guys want respect y'all have to give i am your leader i am the one that won by 82 percent i am the one that carry you trustee jason house you and a belcher that never wins anything over the hump that's why you guys have your seats that you have before you so when you get in these board meetings and you act a fool y'all should stop because at the end of the day, all we've been doing, everybody is fighting since I became mayor. If y'all want to be leaders, y'all got to act like y'all know y'all not leaders. Y'all follow us. Stop following each other because nobody can lead nobody in your group. Not one of y'all. Just, just 
chaotic board meeting that happened yesterday. The beacon of light, Tiffany Hayard, is feeling the pressure. She is definitely feeling the pressure from all of the media attention. I want to discuss my insights when I watched that video last night and, er and earlier today. My observations from just watching a lot of the videos, checking out the news stories, talking to Dalton residents. You guys are already in the chat. I, I had a really eye-opening phone call earlier today from two amazing people and my head was spinning. It was so much to take in, but it made sense when I hear all of the, the situations that's happening here in Dalton, things started to connect with me, right? In my opinion, Mayor Hanyard is a predator. She's exhibiting predatory behavior. Like to me, a predator targets the vulnerable to exploit and manipulate for personal gain. She has demonstrated that, in my opinion. And I think opinion for a lot of people. But this is what we're dealing with, with this mayor and some of the people who are running this situation here. She's a predator. She, explo she exploits vulnerable people. This may not be the best analogy, but I'm making a video about this guy, so I'm going to talk about it. But Vince McMahon is someone that I'm sure if you guys check the news, you see some of the things he's been accused of, and it's pretty disgusting stuff. And people kind of always knew there was something up with him, but I don't think they knew it to this extent. But why I'm comparing it is because as much as he tried to make it seem like he was a decent guy, he played a character on his wrestling program, WWE wrestling program, back in the day, back in the 90s. And what he did in his character, Mr. McMahon, was a man that was vindictive. He exploited people. He did whatever it took to prevail, any means necessary to prevail, to manipulate, to exploit others without any remorse, right? And then it turned out that he, it's, it looks like, according to some of the reports, he basically is that person. He wasn't acting when he was doing the wrestling bit. That was who he is. So um, the reason why I'm bringing this up, because a lot of what I have seen thus far is something similar to that. The mayor's lack of transparency, the vindictiveness, the intimidation tactics. This, this just brings to why we have such a chaotic and unproductive meeting and how everyone just looks frustrated, angry. It's just this deep-seated corruption is, is prevalent because of the leader, the, you know, she complains about how you guys can't be leaders. I'll, I'll, we'll probably watch that clip too. You guys can't be leaders. I'm the leader. You guys can't even handle being a leader. When you see a group of people arguing and fighting or a team arguing and fighting, right? Or a family sometimes arguing and fighting, the blame needs to be placed at the top. Who is the leader of this? Who's the leader of that three hour meeting with the, all they did was beat each other up? Who's the leader? Who are they all following? right? In terms of following the, the mood, the energy, who, who's, who's at the top of the bill? It's the mayor. She sits at the very top, at the right in the middle. So for her to not take accountability for how things are going just shows the kind of person that she is. And we'll see through some of these clips that there was some really odd things happening. Everyone that was on her side said the same stuff as if they all had a script. Or they all had to do something to keep her loyalty or show their loyalty to her. So we have a lot, a lot to go into, you know, chaos, incompetence, corruption, and blind loyalty. Like that's all those things kind of come together to, to where we are right now. But she also is not paying the vendors. And the vendor, and one guy came in and he was looking for his money. And that, that was at least one of them that I was able to hear. And Mayor, Board of Trustees, other officers, and resident of Dalton. My name is Golzar Singh, uh, president of Pan Oceanic Engineering Company. We are a co underground contractors, and I have done a waterman job for city of Dalton. It's been over four months, and I haven't got paid. And uh, I think county recently has transferred the funds to the village. So I'm just here to request that. I need to get paid because I have a lot of bills on that job. We have to pay and uh, being a minority contractor, I don't have too much money either. So I need your help to please get paid. I would greatly appreciate it. working with the village and everybody else. Now, if I'm the leader, I'll be embarrassed. This man is like, I don't have enough money. We did this work. Where's our money? I had to come to this meeting and say, I have, we haven't paid in months. You know, where's, you know, we need to get paid for the job done. I would be embarrassed. I wouldn't just let him just go sit down and, oh yeah, just, you know, talk to so-and-so. I'm like, I'm, you would say, if I didn't, if I did something terrible to someone, like didn't pay, I was like, yo, I'm really sorry for, for this. We really messed up. We try to make it right. But this is routine, 
a lot of people are are looking for their money. It's incompetence, it's corruption, and it's chaos. And if you've already seen the, the, the meeting, why are they so loyal to this person? Why are there, why the each of them had their own rendition of you guys need you guys are the bad guys, and she's amazing. You know, who cares if she eats it on our dime traveling across the country? She's amazing, you know, like you guys need to stop and work. Basically, just bow down, right? You know, sign off these checks because she's great. Regardless of all of the information that we've all seen, why they do it. Now, this clip I'm going to show you is the at first when she said it, I didn't understand what she because she talks really fast. And I noticed that sometimes I talk fast and I realize that I need to slow down because when you talk really fast, people don't understand all the words that you are saying. And she'd be going like a million miles a minute. To a point where, like, I, you know, one thing I like, I wish I had her energy. Now, I'm not going to speculate on how she has this energy. I remember in the last live stream, people had a lot of different theories on why she's able to go a thousand miles a minute, just, just word, just going. But she said secret squirrel meeting. But I didn't, like, at first, I'm like, what, what, what meeting? Like, what's that? But she said it a few more times. So the secret squirrel meeting, the meeting that she was invited to by the other trustees. But all of a sudden, it's I wasn't invited. They're just doing secret stuff, even though, again, she was invited to the meeting. But she's going to talk about that in the next clip right here. Mayor vetoing a couple things from January 2nd, 2024, a regular board meeting. So I'm vetoing that. And that was the that was the budget. So for those that don't know, the Board of Trustees uh, had their own little secret squirrel meeting and took things out of out of the budget that's needed for community. So I am vetoing what they have done. I'm asking again for you guys to go back to the drawing board and add those things back in the budget so we come back to the next board meeting. This body up here will have what they need because the department heads, y'all did not talk to them. Y'all didn't ask them what they needed. I just made a decision without even talking to the people that run the day-to-day -day operation, especially police department fire department, public works, them the main three because them are the ones where we get the services from. As I relates to police, you guys know that evening we had promoted people and when we did that, I don't understand why y'all would go cut a budget when we promoted people. That means an increase in payroll. And then you guys know that we have union, union contracts for all three that's pending. So that's again, why would you cut when you know we fund an increase on salaries for all three? And these are contracts way before me. And I just wish that you guys will communicate with people before making decisions and you don't know how you harming the people. And then also the... Well, the reason why it's even a discussion about cutting the police budget is because she is requesting all the security. I forgot what was email. I forgot the, the word secret service. She has, she spent so much money and these cops are making so much money in overtime that it must be a response like, hey, you can't just continue to do that. The police are not going in the other areas. The, the, the allocation of resources are going into the wrong place. That's why we're seeing the issues that happened with you know, the shooting that happened a couple of days ago. The, you, you're spending too much money with security. Now, if you're making you know about 300K, maybe you can get some private security. I'm not sure how that works, but at the same time, at least you're spending some of your money instead of running up the bill with your security to go from one job to the next. Cause again, she has two jobs, she's the mayor, then she's a supervisor, you know, so she's able to, you know, so she's basically, these guys are following her all the time and getting massive amount of money in, in overtime. Where's the, where's the rest of the resources It's being bled dry. So the, these, the rest of the cops are dealing with a lot of problems where they don't have the necessary resources because she's spending it all, but then turns around and say, well, trustees are, are the ones who are trying to cut the budget for the police officers. Who does that? Very manipulative. She is extremely well, she's gifted at that, that, that manipulation, changing that narrative. I don't know if it's just her or, or someone else is training her to do this, but for her to flip it on everyone else's fault, it's not me. I don't want to cut the budget. I'm running up the budget. I need security. And this is where we are right now. Garbage, the, the trash, the homeware disposal. We need our trash picked up. So I'll say this again, guys, I, can you put that back in? Because the president need the garbage picked up. So I don't want any problems as it relates to getting garbage picked up by you guys taking it out of the budget. So I wanna just point those things out for, for that one veto. Uh, the next veto is on January 24th, 2024. That was another secret squirrel board meeting at the board of trustees head at a secret location. When they did that, I am vetoing all the things. One is they did approval. A se it wasn't a secret location. You knew where it was. You could have you pulled up. We, what are you talking about? We mean like <laughs> secret squirrel meeting. Uh, 
the squirrels meet up and like what is that? I mean, I remember the cartoon Secret Squirrel. I think it was like an Asian he had all the gadgets. Okay, I'm ranting. No mind. Let's continue. A settlement agreement for, of course, the legislative attorney, Otterson. I don't understand how a person can possibly do something like that, but I'll get to that later on. And then also they did an approval of outstanding invoices for him. And they also did something about not putting your name on thing communications that come from a village that's just nonsense so that's the type of things that they did and i am vetoing those things so nonsense so re let's just go back to what she was saying putting your things your name let's rewind it real quick just what she said just nonsense so outstanding invoices for him and they also did something about not putting your name on thing communications that come from a village that's just nonsense no no no, no. this was about her blasting her face on every single billboard all over town. And she's using it as a way to promote herself politically. So the trustees were saying, let's stop this. Let's let's not put our big faces on billboards in order to get more power politically. Let's just put the services that's that's necessary that are provided with the numbers and, and what the, you can get. Let's not put our big faces on there. Let's not try to be slick. So what she's talking about, what she's talking about is nonsense. I think that was a good idea. But of course, why would she want to engage? She's participating in that. She's trying to develop that cult of personality so people can look at her in a positive light so she continue to have power here. So that's the type of thing that they did and I am vetoing those things. So I do want to make sure I read them into record. All right. Well, if you guys have seen this meeting, put in the comments, let me know what, you, what, you, what you've seen, some of the highlights or the lowlights at this point. I think this is probably the cringiest moment. I may be mistaken. There were a lot of them. But the way she was talking... It was very, very interesting. I'll say that. Go ahead, Kim. You have the floor, Code Enforcement. Good evening, Mayor. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Good evening, trustees, residents. I'm Kim, and my report is brief. It's always four, four or five words. We wrote 142 tickets, and we collected $24,624. But tonight, I'm offended and I'm appalled because I moved to Dalton to become a part of the change that I want to see. And it's funny that someone could say yeah because don't nobody want to work here who want to work in a hostile environment and deal with people like you guys mm -hmm. it's hard for me to sit up here at the board meeting every month i make an excuse not to be here because this is pathetic no other municipality no other board meeting do you see people being disrespected to the mayor or the person that's in charge of the meeting disrespect has gone on too far and as far as budget cuts when people call about dogs we the ones that go get those dogs. But if you guys not not willing to give us what it is that we need in our budget to continue to pick up dogs, we can't do our job. I, I don't like the fact that down my block where I live, it's dark. We need street lights. I got a couple senior neighbors and veterans that need roofs and windows. And everything has been stagnated because no one wants to do the right thing. And that's to put the interests of the residents first. We, we got to do better as a people. We have to do better as a people. Come on, y'all. This is sad. It's sickening. I don't know how you guys go home and live with yourself at night and, and knowing that all this is about this lady. This lady is about these people. Notice that's the second person. I think it's multiple said she's for the people. Did they all get an email? <laughs> they all get a text message. This is what you say. Remix it however you want it. But make sure that you always say, at least you say at least once, mayor is for the people and you guys are for yourselves. I'm disgusted. I'm appalled. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put some some of the tech some of the chat I've seen. She seems real chill. I'll, I'll say that. So let's just make it about these people, which is is me included. I'm a resident in Dalton as well. No one ever talks about the great things that's being done. Only thing you hear on the news is, yeah, she spent the money. Miss Lightfoot, when she go out of town, she's staying in presidential suites. She's staking lobster. Look at the face of the look at the face of the dude. Is that the fire is the fire chief, right? He just look look at his eyes closed. Like, I can't believe I'm here. And I can't believe she's talking about first of all, Mayor Lightfoot is not the mayor anymore. Is is she? But you let me know. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Johnson. So so she couldn't say the current mayor? I mean. And who cares? Who cares if she had lobster? Laura Lightfoot had lobster too. No one complained about that. I mean, I don't know. I think Lightfoot had a lot of complaints about a lot of different things. She should have, someone should have gave her the full script and had her read it. Because I don't know if this helped. It just, just really cringe. And 
I feel I feel tough for that guy. He just closed his eyes like I can't believe she's saying this. But because she's doing it because she's a young black woman, oh, oh is yeah. something wrong with that? Yes, that's, change that's, and growth that's, that's is uncomfortable. Funny. Corruption is uncomfortable too. And intimidation and lack of transparency and hiding what you're doing that hurts a lot. So you know, just saying. Just like when your feet grew from a five and a half to a six, and you tried to put that small shoe on your feet, it hurt. It hurt. It. Come on, let's come together and figure something out. The world is looking at us make fools of ourselves. I don't even know what the position of a trustee is or what a trustee does. Shouldn't she know that? Shouldn't she, shouldn't she know like what a trustee? Shouldn't she know that? I mean, you know, she's going forth, but should she have an idea of what they do? Is she just being funny or being? But she says like foot like she, I don't know. Or oh, she legit just don't know. So I don't even know what y'all doing. Just let the man do everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. She did not look, she did not look good. Uh, Mike says, check out her background. Yes, I have heard quite a good amount about her background. And if somebody is going to run for mayor, I'd like to see what you're going to bring to the table, or what you're offering, other than a smear campaign on the mayor that we have mm -hmm. sitting now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who going to run? Who going to run? What's what, the, what does that have to do? What? is going on in this meeting with the, the agenda and the things that need to get taken care of. So you know the mayor told her what to say. They the, the people who are backing her up are saying they're trying to take me out politically. So you must respond by saying again, for the people, they are not, they're, they're the, the terrible, selfish ones. They're the corrupt ones. I'm again, I'm your savior. So talk accordingly. The plan, since we gonna kick her down and everything she's putting out there is bad. Come on, somebody with an idea, a suggestion. Tell us what you got. Give us an option. Because right now we don't have an option. We don't. There is no one else that can do this. There's nobody else. Then no one else can run the, the you know, the being a mayor and run the, the township. No one can do it. This is this is all we got, y'all. Who going who gonna to run? Who going to run? So a part of a cult or running a team of people that you can manipulate and exploit. So going back to that Vincent McMahon analogy, when you are searching for your next prey, you need people that you can control. Well, how, how can you find that? You find people who are in need, they have a void, they need something. It looks like for many of the people that Hanyard has hired, she's hired people who never had the kind of money that she's paying them right now, have criminal backgrounds, would probably stop them from getting other types of positions that they can make this kind of money. She grabs them out of nowhere, puts them in places they probably are not equipped to do or have the competence to do, right? Well, even if they are competent, she gives them the kind of power and money they will never ever get anywhere else without, you know, hard work and all that type of thing. So they have to back her up. They have to, they have to, they have to run the play. They got to run the play. If they're not running the play, she will replace them with someone else that needs that pick me up, who wants that five figure, six figure position. So that's why it's 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 blind loyalty, but it's loyalty of, wow, I'm actually making more money than I have made in my life. I get able to take care of my family. Yeah, she's doing some weird stuff, but she's so nice because every week, every two weeks, I'm getting that check. You know what? They, they're mean to her. She's actually a good person. I mean, this is the mental gymnastics that a person that is under that kind of cult of personality is, is adjusting because you have to get up in the morning and not and keep going. So you have to put this in a position that yeah, it's not that bad. And they're just being mean and I'm being taken care of. These are the kind of people that she has around her circle. Many of these people have some shady past. They have a lot of some shadiness in their past. And this mayor is, again, you're going to love me no matter what. I pick you out of obscurity and poverty, maybe. I don't know. I'm not going deep into their lives, but gives them that great position, gives them the money, and she's able to consolidate her power. Jeffrey says it right, power, money and power motivate. Yeah. And Kathleen says it's being a doormat for crumbs. But you'd be surprised. I mean, what we consider crumbs could be so much where you throw away your, your sense of morality, throw away your own principles for a, a position, a job. Many people do it. I want to, I want to check out William Moore's video. William Moore's, because I thought he was, his, his grandstanding was actually uh, pretty epic as well. Next, we have housing. Uh, William Moore. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor, uh, Board of Trustees, our department heads, and to our precious uh, citizens. Mayor, if I can just say, just for clarification, uh, Trustee Holmes and Trustee Stan Brown have been in support of your vision 
So every one of our department heads up here, we work in departmentally. If one is affected with the budget, we're all affected. And as the director of housing and business licensing, we try and turn this village around. Not at one point have we got into a meeting with our leader and she said what the previous administration has done. But I'm going to let you know, we came in and it was a mess. I worked in a water department, worked in housing. They had some very simple things that just weren't in place. And I see some of the faces, the same faces, but I'm going to tell you, it is affecting our residents. And at some point, we have to, we're not talking about agreement. We talk about what you're elected to do, and it's to serve our citizens. And we as a department head, me as a department head, we struggle when we don't get the resources that we need to satisfy our residents. And I'm surprised that the residents who are, who are not getting these services are not saying more about that because we work tirelessly. So when they say we don't work, no, we're working tirelessly. I mean, it's 7.30 in the morning, sometimes 8, 9 o'clock at night. Why? Because it is a great need. So I'll, I'll leave it at this and I'll give my report. So I appreciate you hearing me out. But at what point as leaders do we have a conviction about taking care of the people's business? Because that's why the grandstanding and the lecturing as if everyone is just stupid and hasn't figured all this out. And for him to stand up there and say, why is things are not working and put all of the problems on one side, you would think as a mayor, right? Or any kind of leader, doesn't matter, mayor, teacher, coach. If, if you have a divided locker room, one of the things you would do if you're a coach or the, or the team president, whatever you want to call it, is start blaming one side of this group and not look at the other side and say, well, what are you doing to contribute to the situation? But again, this is all, yeah, that's a good, I don't use a lot of buzzwords like that, but yeah, gaslighting. It's like a lot of gaslighting. Like you're just trying to piss. I mean, that's when Jason Houses gets, he, he gets, uh, he starts cleaning house. He's a master of it. Kane Yard is a master of gaslighting. Saying things get under your skin, for you to react aggressively, then she turns around with the long lecture like that she did later on in the video. Kasha? Um, yes, ma'am, I have a comment. All right. I have a comment. I'm going to follow it with a superseding motion. Alternative, I've got off Tiffany Nelson draws your direction on that. However, I I'm going to say this in terms of kind of all the things that have been said. First, I want to commend Trustee Norwood, Trustee Tammy Brown, Trustee Tr Keanu Trustee, Belcher. Trustee. The floor is mine, Mayor. Trustee. I want to commend Trustee. them for standing in here during these attacks. Trust me. No, the mayor does not want to hear Trust me. He said, however, I'm this is why the means get out of order. Notice when the other pro tenured side, they were able to go with the, remember, they're supposed to be reporting, right? Like each one, she calls them and they're supposed to report in their section, right? The water guy and the fire and the police. You're supposed to throw out report. Your What's your report? What numbers you want to present? But they, she allowed them to gaslight, to condemn, to say whatever and how great she is. He decides to do it. It's a problem, right? I wonder why. Can you stay on track with what we're talking about, which is corporate bills? If you want to say your comment, you can say your comment after it's a motion and a second on the floor, trustee. Trustee, trustee. It's a motion and a second on the floor regarding the bills. Can we stay the course? Getting towards the bills, Mayor. Trustee, you can make your statement after we're done with the bills, trustee. And the budget. Trustee. So. Trustee, but you want to leave though, right? We can, this this why we get nowhere. I, I we get well, nowhere because you guys want it your way. Y'all don't follow no robber rules of order. Y'all want to get out of order when y'all want to talk. But come on. I am worried about it. Don't worry about the residents for the final, which y'all been up to in one second. Don't worry about it. But what I'm saying to you is stick to the agenda. We on corporate bills. This is why we stay here all night. But everybody was giving acknowledgement. So we want to talk about the bills and what the board has cut out. The, the bills are not being paid currently. At this very right, moment, I'm gonna let you few out, but I'm just trying to show y'all how y'all be so disrespectful and y'all expect the respect to be respect. You out of order, trustee. Stick to the facts. The facts is on the agenda. So, so go to the bill. And I will name for a state bank, which is our police vehicles, the Durats and the Durangos and the Fiats for public works. That bill was approved by the board May of 2023. We received an email stating that those cars will be repossessed if we do not get any payment. That email had been communicated already. Nobody responded. So imagine my surprise seven months later, I get an email and I sent, I forward the email over like I do the other 15 that I've received, no response. And then come in here and say, the board cut something out. I'm going over these construction, repaved all those streets. We're happy for that. Board approved that. 
June of 2023, they are $300,000. Just got an email two days ago about the police ammunition. Has it been paid? Overdue for 23. That hadn't even been presented to the board. Wow. So the board is approving what's needed. Another one, I'm getting calls about electricity, lights not being put on. Residents say the board hasn't approved it. Mead, which is the light post. For those who are not getting their lights turned on, board approved that. September 2023, lights still not on. Mead still has not received the payment. So this circus that's being put on right now about put something back in the budget, we've seen there, it's been reported, and you know this is going to end up with, a, with, with, another, with another video because we want to put the documentation out there. Everybody, we can come in here, say what we want to. At the end of the day, vendors are not being paid. Board approved it. The vendors are not being paid. So when you sit here and we talk about how we don't have the only item from the police budget specifically, and I'm saying that, I understand from each one. I understand that everybody up there had to say what they were told to say. To be honest. You do. But I'm going to say this. No, the police department works hard. The fire department works hard. Public works works hard. That's why I don't take any offense at what's being said, because I know where it's coming from. But if we're going to just talk about this in real terms, the items taken out, of, taken out of the departments was the overtime. And that's because the overtime is being spent in ways that it shouldn't. But if we want to talk about more officers, gladly, we put that in there. And I've just listed several, and I have more, items that have been approved by the board. People still haven't received the checks. Crazy. Brother Moore, you prayed us in on unity. You prayed us in and came with the most divisive speech I heard in my life. Don't pray for me no more. Woo. Yeah, when I, when I first saw that, I was like, he got him. I was like, man, he he's this is like the height of like pissed off. Like this is getting ridiculous. Yeah, he's cutting through the bullshit. You know, with the, you know, like I said, that grandstanding speech he had with William Moore had. Like we're getting getting tired of this. You're getting tired of these people pretending not to know what's going on. Why are these vendors not getting paid by things they're, that everyone approved of? Like, what's, where's the money? But then you still want the trustees to sign off on all of these things. It doesn't make any sense. It's getting to a point where everyone just looks upset. I would be upset too, because it's just not making any sense. And Hanyard just seems to be okay with this. Like, you know, some people are perfectly fine in chaos. Like they, they feel comfortable in toxic chaos. I'm sure you guys know, like there, there's people who have relationships or either at work or personal life, like they just seem real comfortable with things just not working out, toxic, aggressive, back and forth, where, you, where everyone around starts to get that toxic energy. Then you become a little bit of that because you're around it so often. It, it, it gets exhausting. You know, like if you work for a boss that did that, the first thing I would suggest is you probably should find a different job because eventually your mental health will be a by the way, she's behaving. I mean, man, no one wanted to be. No one wants to be there. No one does. If we're gonna do this and we're gonna be honest about it, let's be honest and be direct. But if we're gonna sit here and keep doing this, because I really wasn't gonna make no speech. I was gonna sit here, but they, it's just coming. I'm gonna read the same things that I read last meeting because it was given to us again. This meeting to approve to take off the list. This is nothing new. This is the same stuff from last time. But. When the mayor doesn't get away, she puts it down there and keeps trying to shove it down your throat until you have to approve it. But none of this going back I and forth. I need to pause when it comes to order in here. You have to give respect. You guys want respect, y'all have to give. I am your leader. I am the one that won by 82%. Ew. Why do you need to remind people that she is such... A, that it's just... Let's, re, let's, let's rewind. Let's, let's, she has to remind everyone. You know, most of us don't need to remind you that they're a leader. You notice that like effective leaders, you don't need to, they don't need to remind you that they're a leader. You know, like if someone's yelling, I'm the man, like if you running things, you don't have to say that because it's, it's, it's already said. It's like, it's like, oh yeah, this guy seemed like, oh, this girl, this woman, oh yeah, definitely running things. Don't need to, need to tell you that. You have to give respect. You guys want respect. Y'all have to give. I am your leader. I am the one that won by 82%. I am the one that carry you, trustee Jason House, you and a belcher that never wins anything over the hump. That's why you guys have your seats that you have before you. So when you get in these board meetings and you act a fool, y'all should stop. Because at the end of the day, all we've been doing, everybody is fighting since I became mayor in the village of Dalton. I never thought in a million years that my team, the team that I ran with, including Allison Key for the clerk, would sit here and turn on me the way y'all did right, what, a week, two weeks into taking off. 
that show me that you guys have been planning, plotting, meeting. People have already been snitching on y'all this entire time. It's sad. But I sit here and I let y'all say whatever y'all want to say. But when other people want to talk, y'all want to answer, get mad, not let them get their point across. Y'all need to stop. Just like I sat here and I took everything y'all said. And then I respond. Y'all got to learn to do the exact same thing, but it gets too hot in the kitchen that you got to jump in and got to en engage with people while they trying to get their point across. You guys can make assumptions, say whatever you want up here. You don't know the day to day. Y'all get to a board meeting and don't even ask questions before you get to the board meeting. But then we put on a show and try to act like people not paying bills, people owe money, people got all these issues. That's what y'all do. And y'all could have easily, I keep saying what? Call my phone. Call my phone. But nobody in here does it because y'all don't want to amend this. Y'all don't want unity. Y'all don't want to work together. Y'all don't want to do the will of the people. I got a problem with that. Boy, yeah, it's, it's a lot to take in. Maybe, are we done? You guys want to continue listening to her rant about call my phone, even though they reach out to her and she does not respond. She doesn't respond to the media at this point. Like, but yeah, she's so open. The door is open. She's not answering the phone to the people that she doesn't agree with. Everyone is an op. Everyone's opposition. If you do not. If you're not doing that, you know, the spiel where they all defended her and said, like, you guys suck and, and she's amazing. If you're not a part of that team, she has no, no use for you. She has no use for you. And how dare y'all keep telling my team that they are made to say anything. All my team are go-getters. All of them. Nobody have to go twist their arm, make them do stuff. We don't do that here. They got a mind of their own. And you guys mad because they telling y'all what it is. No one make them say things. They know how to talk. They know what the problems are. Y'all cut they departments, their departments, right? You try to attack the mayor. These are the day-to-day -day operations that they do, that they govern. But y'all sit down with them and say, hey, career, what do you need for public work? Y'all get all these complaints that go out, all these notices that go out that say, hey, we got a water main break. Hey, we got this going on in town. All these issues. But you never once, if y'all want to be leaders, y'all got to act like it. Y'all know, y'all not leaders. Y'all followers. Stop following each other. Because nobody can lead nobody in your group. Not one of y'all. Y'all sitting here hurting the village, hurting the town. I have a problem with that. Real leadership right there, guys. Real leadership, right? She's she's showing the blueprint on how to be a leader. Then we get up here and every board meeting, every board meeting. And Dan, don't you get up here talking about no two meets when they can't get through the first meet. Don't do that. We got to get through the first bit. We can't get through the first meeting as it relates to paying bills or paying. This is, this is her routine. You know, basically put everyone down, elevate herself, ele elevate the people who who said who kept on script, who ran the play. She put the play out. They ran the play the way she wanted to. So she's giving you know them the flowers. Okay, so the next thing I, we're gonna spend some time on with uh, interim police chief Lacey. He had a lot to say during this meeting and was going back and forth. And this was a part of the pattern that you would see from him and the the public works department and William Moore, and that uh, we'll go into Kim, uh, code enforcement. They all had a script. They all had a plan. It was kind of like when you, when, you, when you play football or you see the NFL, in the first couple of plays, in any NFL game, the offense, the first couple of plays are scripted. They have, we're going to do the first couple of plays. This is what it is. It's not random. Like, okay, our first play in the first uh, quarter, we got a few plays that's automatically re uh, rehearsed. We're gonna go. We're gonna go through it. This is what was starting to happen. Where they, instead of Tiffany doing most of the yelling and the condemnations and the criticism, now it's the 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 lackeys. It's their turn to criticize and and condemn to support their mayor because they know where their butter is uh, being buttered. Or their no, where their bread is being buttered. Let's go and uh, check out with police uh, deputy chief Lacey. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Uh, Board of Trustees to Dalton. Uh, I want to thank my police department because these guys work tirelessly. They do what they do because they love the residents of Dalton and they know that the responsibility they have is great. What I'd like to comment on, we had an incident that occurred at the AutoZone. I'm sure everybody in here knows what happened. Unfortunately, it was an incident that came into our town from somewhere else. Uh, they ended up in the AutoZone parking lot to where there were people that were injured. Uh, at this time, the matter is currently under investigation and there is no threat to the public. Um, with that being said, too many times we get out there and we say what the police uh, are not doing. Uh, the Dawn Police Department is an excellent police department. I'm a 28 year veteran of this police department. I am very proud of them. 
So anytime we get attacked, if I take it personal. There were some things that were brought up in reference to a carjacking that uh, occurred at the gas station, uh, the Amico gas station, I believe it was, this weekend. The young lady said that uh, she was carjacked. She was not carjacked. She left her keys in the vehicle, went inside the gas station. Somebody, crime of opportunity, guess what they did? They jumped in her car and took it. So it wasn't a carjacking like it was put out uh, on Facebook or wherever else it was put out. It was basically an incident that could have been uh, avoided. And whoa, whoa, whoa. There's some victim blaming over here. Listen, if I leave my car running, you're not supposed to get in there. If, if, if I leave my car running for one second for me to get out to, I don't know, pick up a quarter across the street and someone jumps, I, I, I've been robbed. What are you talking about? That's a crime. He made it seem like, well, shit, well, that's their fault. Now, obviously, we want to protect our things and do the right thing to make sure that we're not um, putting ourselves in position to get taken advantage of. But whoa, I've never heard a cop talk that way, as if unless he has a personal problem with someone. We'll, we'll talk about in terms of, you know, his police work. And it was not because of negligence on that person's part. I also would like to thank the Dalton Police Department because what they do, they do because they love the job, they love the badge, and they love the people. Too many times they talk about what the police department's not doing, but let me say this. Um, if you don't know the facts, don't get on TV and say something. And the reason why is because what you're doing is you're putting out false narratives. The people in town deserve, they deserve to be safe. They deserve to feel safe. And it also puts my officers in jeopardy when the, when the truth is not put out. Unfortunately, there were those that got on TV and said certain things were not true. I'm not gonna go into them, but what I will say, in order for us to operate a police department, uh, you can't cut a million dollars out of the budget of the police department and expect to get the services that the village of Dalton and the residents deserve. They deserve better than what they've been getting. It's unfortunate that politics are being played, but what has happened is a million dollars out of my budget has been cut because of politics. And what happens when you do that, you cut the services of the village, of the people. Do I sound upset? Yes, I am. Because you know what? For those that live in town, they expect those same services. When you get up here and you play politics, what ends up happening is you don't get what you say you should get, but then you can make comments about it. Our, our police department is an outstanding police department. I had a chance to go to other police departments. Who clapped? Who was the one person that clapped? I would like to know who clapped. Probably was the mayor. I chose to stay in Dalton because I love Dalton and I love the community. But what I will say is if you want us to function as a police department, don't cut our budget because that same money that you're cutting is the same money we need to operate from contracts to employees to equipment. And when you have equipment, not all equipment is new. You still have old equipment and that needs to be maintained to keep the budget. So the only thing I'm saying to you is when it comes down to it, and please forgive me if I sound upset because I am. When I took this seat, when I was honored to take this seat and given this seat, I found out more things than I had ever, ever found out. But I don't play politics, not with the residents of Dalton, not with my police officers. So the money that was taken out of the budget, put it back. Don't say, don't say that you are for the police department and you're mm -hmm. taken away from the police department. It doesn't work like that. Our lives are on there. We're the ones running to the gunshots uh, and the bullets when things happen. So... And this is where it just seems like he's just, he is playing politics. I wouldn't consider him a stupid person or, or naive. You, he has to understand that a lot of money is being placed in an area that is not necessary. Or at least if there's things happening where the budget needs to, to be altered, that there's certain things may be cut. And maybe that security that she's spending so much money on needs to be cut a little bit. That is not that they're cutting the budget because of whatever they, in his head, thinks that did anti-cops or whatever. That there's only a limited amount of money and it can't be all to follow and act like the Secret Service to the mayor. Like, I'm sure he can't be that uh, ridiculous in terms of not understanding that. So he says he's playing Pollux now. Um, there was the uh, a video that came out about two hours ago uh, with the former chief. Let's play that before we really get into uh, Chief Lazy. I have that, I have that clip right ready for you. And... Former South Suburban Police Chief is blowing the whistle on the embattled mayor of Dalton, Tiffany Henyard. Yes, Fox 32 has investigated, investigated Henyard's use of a police security detail, taking officers off the street and costing thousands of dollars in overtime. And I that was, that's it. That's, I mean, we'll, we'll listen to the rest, but you're taking police officers off the street to protect just you. 
And now we're confused and shocked when there's issues happening. The former chief is talking about it exclusively to Fox 32's Dane Placco. Yeah, Mayor Haggard fired her chief of police late last year without any approval from the village board. So now Robert Collins has filed a lawsuit against the village. And tonight he's talking exclusively to Fox 32 about what he saw on the inside. The manpower was just very stressed and critical to the point of almost breaking, um, having to provide officers on the detail rather than have officers out patrolling the streets. Former Dalton Police Chief Robert Collins spoke to us from Florida, where he's taken a new job. But he says he remains frustrated by what he experienced leading an undermanned, overworked police department, demanded a large personal security detail. You know, wrong is wrong, and there's a time to hold people responsible and accountable for their actions. Last year, Fox 32 investigated Henyard's detail, following along as Dalton police officers drove her from morning till night, often to her second job as Thornton Township supervisor in South Holland. Why? Why did he need that many people to drive her? Like, she really thinks she's a president. That's why she was so excited when she went to the White House. She thinks in her head, she's right there. She's a mayor. She's going to probably think, oh, I go, maybe I'll become a senator. You have to see how happy and excited she was. She was like, I finally made it. Look, I'm kind of like the president already. Look, I got 24-hour detail where cops that should be taking care of crime, making the streets safe, putting people behind bars that deserve to be behind bars. No, they're just driving you around. And, and also, why would they go back in the street when they just doing this light work, making tons of money? So this is, this is where we are right now. Racking up hundreds of hours of overtime, costing taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars. We needed those officers to be on the street fighting crime. And instead, we have several officers that are uh, riding around protecting America. At least two and as many as four officers at a time, he says. Collins says the security detail was warranted when it started in 2021, after a police-involved shooting sparked protests in the community. And at some point, the protests stop. The um, the uh, the things going on around the protests all eventually stop. However, the detail continued. But now he says it's turned into more than just security. Officers are being used as Henyard's personal valets. Officers would be sent out to run errands, to do pickups, to do drop-offs. Just like, are you serious? She thinks she has a secret a secret service detail. That's that's secret service detail where they do basically all those kind of, like, they, they valet. Like, they're cops. They, they, they didn't sign up for that. They're not bodyguards. Yes, they, they protect the, the whole town. I mean, that's what they're supposed to do. They, they're the bodyguards of Dalton, not just you, the mayor. But look, look how they, they're, they're walking around. Like, they're, they're, just, they're basically just, now they're just bodyguards. They're not enforcing any laws. Last week, a mass shooting on Sibley Boulevard in Dalton left four people injured. Collins believes the bad guys know there aren't enough cops on Dalton streets. But Village of Dalton has its challenges with gangs, guns, and drugs. And if those officers aren't there, the visibility isn't there. And if the visibility isn't there, then criminals have free reign. Earlier today, we sent an email to both uh, Mayor Henyard and the uh, chief administrator here at the Village of Dalton, outlining the allegations made by the former chief, asking for a response. So far, we have not received one. We'll have much more on this story tonight at 9. Live in Dalton. I, you know, Lacey has to know this is happening. But I guess maybe he doesn't care. So we let's 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 get a deep dive into Lacey. So there was a case that I that uh, I was notified about, and we're gonna we're gonna put it up right here on the video um, about his his ability to take care of crime and his uh, involvement in some of this stuff. So let, now it doesn't seem like to me that this guy is the kind of police officer that you may even want in your town. So there was an arrest about five years ago. Um, raised concerns about how the cops treat the mentally ill. Lacey was heard saying some wild stuff about... Cheryl, the Dalton Police mission statement says the department's highest priority is protection of all. Less than two weeks ago, on a snowy Halloween afternoon, the arrest of a suburban woman on minor charges is raising questions about the protection of those who are mentally ill. Some of this video obtained by the I-team may be unsettling. She got around. They spit in my food. It started with a police call for an out-of-control customer at a fast food restaurant. Do you need medical? I'm fine. I just want to go home. 
The woman was taken into custody and put into a police vehicle. I'm mentally ill. I'm mentally ill. I'm mentally ill. What kind of mental illness do you have? She told police she was bipolar and on medication. The I team has decided not to use her name or show her. On the way to Dalton's police station, she became emotional and more agitated. <laughs> Stop it! At headquarters, they walked her inside and removed the handcuffs, but as police filled out paperwork, she grew angrier, and things went downhill from there. She removed her shirt and wrapped it around her neck, tightening the shirt as if to simulate hanging. When one officer moved in to help the woman... Who's that guy? Who's the one... Now, I've seen enough footage of people going in intake. In fact, my, my, my chick used to work as a corrections officer. When you see someone... Even if it's simulated, even if it's an act to do some harm upon yourself, you have to go in there and stop it. That's what you're supposed to do. Why are you holding this guy back? They're saying she's hanging herself. She's hysterical. This is what cops are supposed to do. This is their job. They have to deal with the mentally ill and they have to have extreme amount of patience and compassion. Yes, some people lie. But if you see someone about to harm themselves, why are you holding that person back? What's going on here? This is just, this is just disgusting. Woman, he is seen to be held back by Dolton Deputy Police Chief Lewis Lacey. I said, come on, she tried to check herself out and still just pass out. She'll be fine. How does he still have a job? Like, how, how does he still have? How does he still have a job? What what kind of uh, police work is that? Oh yeah, this person is going to just choke themselves out. Uh, she'll be fine. Seriously. Then an officer asked if he could help her. Deputy Chief Lacey replied, "No, not yet," and told her to put her clothes back on. You just gonna pass out, baby, and then you'll 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 start breathing. About 10 seconds later, she began calming down, and in a half minute, she was putting on a sweatshirt. She didn't pass out. Let her choke herself? Certainly, obviously, not okay on any standard. The comment was just completely callous and dangerous. The Disability Civil Rights Group equipped for equality said police should have de-escalated the situation. I think it was appropriate for the senior officer to tell the responding officer not to touch her and to kind of gently make some space. Again, that body cam recording. You just gonna pass out, baby, and then you'll, you'll, you'll start breathing. I knew she couldn't let herself pass out. I, I knew that what would end up happening is she would end up just bringing the shirt down like she did and then she would stop. How do you know that? You kind of just went with like, like, I don't care about this person. I'm tired, I'm kind of don't want to deal with this person. It didn't seem like this person wasn't a person, like it was an animal or a child. You don't know that. You don't know what kind of episode this person was having. So for him to walk, you know, to walk around and as if he knew this is going to happen, no, it worked out in his favor. But how is he still working? That, that's, that's, a, that's the question right there, the answer. How did you know that? From my experience as far as being a police officer, I've seen somebody attempt to, when I say choke themselves, pull their shirt over their neck and then let it down. I see. And that's exactly what she did. Dalton's police chief, Ernest Mobley, told the I-team that his command staff would now review how the incident was handled. We asked a civil rights attorney and a mental health expert to look at the police body cam video. When I watch a video like that and I see anyone being treated in a way that feels unfair or not best practice as a mental health advocate, it's heartbreaking. The police did not arrive when she was in a state of crisis. They actually escalated her to the point of crisis. Both experts said this incident suggests additional training could be helpful. If someone feels hopeless and out of control to the point where they're threatening and attempting suicide in front of law enforcement, our understanding is that that woman should have been transported by way of paramedics or the police for a um, suicide assessment and for safety. Looking back on that incident, would a better thing to, to have done have been to help her or put her back in handcuffs so she couldn't do this anymore? Well, you, you got to understand that she was already acting in an irrational manner. So continually trying to restrain her because she was actually coming down from whatever was going on with her would probably have been worse than continually to try to detain her. After refusing medical attention, the woman was released from custody. She is still charged, though, with battery and criminal damage to property from the restaurant incident, has a court date next month. So this is the kind of guy we're dealing with. That's the one that sat there and um, defending the mayor. This, this dude, Lacey, has a long, long history with this kind of behavior. Um, we're going to check out something real quick. Uh, let's see if I, if I have it on this computer. Yes, 
So this dude had quite a disciplinary record going back 20 years. Now, the problem is this is pretty, pretty hard to read. I wish I knew how to uh, zoom in this damn thing. But he's been having a lot of issues. He's one of the people who are enforcing a lot of the intimidation that's happening, Dalton. If you guys have seen a few of the videos about people saying, yeah, there's, there's squad cars around. They're like, they're spying. They're kind of just hanging out. Look, they're, doing, they're trying to intimidate me, especially if I'm public with whatever I'm trying to do. Let's say, for instance, the, um, the gentleman that tried to have that car event, it was shut down. Standoff that night ended with Gardner in handcuffs. I'm tired of them. They've been harassing me for months and months and months. They destroyed my trucking company. They shut my store down. Others in town are sharing similar stories of alleged retaliation for not supporting this suburban mayor. It's a regular occurrence. She uses the police force to intimidate residents. She used her entire police force to come in and prevent something from happening because things didn't go her way. Lacey is the enforcer. He's the muscle behind the super mayor. He is there to do whatever she asks of him to do because, as you can see from the situation that happened with that with that lady, he don't give a damn, and he's and he likes to intimidate. It seems like he doesn't care. Callous is, I think, is a really good word for him. So there's a few instances I see from this um, from this 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 record. So he has one on um, so 20 years ago. He had to submit a letter of explanation and a recommendation when a laptop computer was left in a tactical car. Let me see if there's something I can actually read from this. I can't read that. Let me see what else What else they have. There's something else here. So he had to write to his commander about, we'll read it right here. Sir, while cleaning my Mossberg 12 gauge shotgun at my residence located at blah, 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 there was a round in the chamber that I thought was cleared from the weapon. I am firmly advising you that I pulled the trigger and the, and the round discharged from the gun. The gun was pointed in a downward position and there, there was no property damage on the floor, which is weird, which is weird. I, I mean, maybe, I don't know, I, maybe you just shoot your gun accidentally on the ground. Um, but you had to, you had to uh, talk about that one there. Let me see if there's, there's something else here about a really uh, aggressive um, arrest that he had. But yeah, he was uh, cleaning his service record and it accidentally discharged. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Okay, so someone had a claim here and it's right here. Um, and I'm going to read it what, what this person um, said. So around this date and time, September 5th, uh, 2018, at approximately 12 p.m., officer or sergeant Lacey exited his police vehicle, and he said he was going to use his taser gun. This was on Dotson uh, Avenue. I did not understand why he was approaching me that way. I was scared, so I was following in his orders. Lacey put his knee on my back and punched me in my back in my face. I was not being combative. Lacey put handcuffs on me and then snatched me up. Lacey asked who vehicle was playing the music. I said it was mine. Lacey proceeded to search my vehicle and he found nothing. Then officer Lacey searched me and found nothing. Then he searched three other people and found some grams of marijuana, but he told them to leave the scene. So he found some marijuana on other people and told them to leave the scene. Then he decides, I guess he was towing my vehicle and I was going to jail. I asked Lacey, why did he punch me in the stomach? And he said that, then he said, quote, Shut the fuck up. Another officer pulled up. Um, they described a the person. He told me to get in the vehicle. I, I asked Lacey why I'm being arrested and why my car is being told. He held me um, as I was handcuffed and told the officer to mace me. The officer pepper sprayed me and threw me in the back of the car. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's where we are, right? Let me see. Uh, Katie says, if you're using a mouse scroll, let me see. I, I think the problem is, I'm using StreamYard. It's not, it's, it's, I should have uh, probably used like something else where I can control exactly how to put um, this in. But, uh, but basically this, yeah, if you guys can read it here, this is what I just read. Um, he says, uh, someone wrote here, this was an ongoing problem with Dalton police officers. Uh, my attorney have uh, the video of this incident. This video only shows I was being handcuffs, being pepper sprayed and also not being combative. Um, this is basically excessive force. So there's a lot of issues with this, this guy. I mean, I mean where's, where's, the, where's the picture of this guy? This individual, this man right here, and he's a very dangerous person. He does things the way he wants to be, he wants them to do. You can see how he treats people who are vulnerable in vulnerable states. This guy right here, he calls you know, himself Dalton's finest. And he is Mayor Kenyon's um, attack dog. 
And the reason why a lot of people do not want to be public with a lot of this information is because, well, he's, he's at this point have control of a lot of the police officers and they don't want to be spied on or intimidated or, or messed with to a point where they can get trumped up charges. He seems like a guy that has a superiority complex and he wants to exact whatever kind of intimidation he wants. So this is where he, this is where we are with, with this situation. And he's a perfect fit with the mayor. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. He's right there with her. That's why she has him on a team. Probably why Collins was let go. This is, this is her guy on her team. So he, he, he went there. He, he was very, very vocal, um, backing up the mayor and the nonsense. So there's more back and forth. I think I have this where with, with Lacey and Belcher, because that's where he was looking. If you notice when he was speaking, he was looking over to Belcher. So obviously he has an issue with her. Let's listen to uh, the back and forth with, with that. We have uh, code enforcement. Uh, Kim. Madam Mayor. Oh, yeah. Can I address something? Oh, go ahead. Um, a minute ago or a second ago, something was said, go hard or go home. Mm -hmm. Trust me, guess what? It's not about that. It's about the services of the people of Dalton. Mm -hmm. So when you say that and you get your laughs, I get it. But let me tell you something. When you call or a squad car, if you call for one, you want that car to show up. But if they, if they don't have the funding to do it, if you're taking something from the from them, what do you expect them to do? Now you can we can go back and forth. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here for the people. So I took that personally when you said that. What you need to do is take care of the people, mm -hmm. not your personal business. Amen. Not the fact that you don't like the mayor. Because let me tell you something. It ain't about the mayor because she's about the people. The mayor is about the people, y'all. The mayor is about the people. Remember, she's up there with Jesus. Interesting. What sanctimonious from this guy. Like, I don't know if I, listen, I'll say this right now. If, if this is the guy's going to show up when I call the police, maybe I need to go and figure this out on my own. I'll just say that right now. I don't want to get punched in the stomach and pepper sprayed and, and thrown in the back of a car with, I had nothing on me. He ain't find a gun, he ain't find drugs. I'm, I'm in, I'm going to jail. I don't know. Nah, you know what? I'll figure this out. Maybe I'll get my car back. Maybe I'll go get my own car back. Like, I don't want this guy coming to help me out. Cause if you, if you're that stupid and you think, that the mayor is doing a great job. I don't think you're able to enforce anything. I'm here. I'm about the people. I could have walked away a long time ago. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm out here. He says that, but I'm sure he's getting paid very, 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 very well to stay. So let's not get it twisted. I'm sure he's getting paid very well. Here at two, three in the morning when I don't have to be. My guys are working hard when they don't have to. They can go somewhere else. They choose to stay here. So don't say go hard and go home. What I need you to do is just vote for what we need. Can I respond? You sure? I mean, since you made a statement, can I respond? Sure. I said go hard or go home because, of course, everybody was prepped to say whatever they had to say today. But <laughs> let me speak to say this. When we talk about what we not doing, trustees don't walk around with video cameras and uh, drones showing every move they make. They don't have the resources that somebody else have on the taxpayer's dime to show everything they are doing. These people sit up here talking about we ain't did nothing when all they're doing is listening to what somebody told them. For somebody to sit here and say the resources that we're taking away, for one, we have exceeded and over exceeded the budget that was initially put in. And so when people we're getting emails talking about the cars being repossessed and then somebody sitting here talking about that, they know the money is there. I have a problem with that. Then when you bring the issue to everybody knows that police is very valuable. But when you're saying you hear two or three o'clock in the morning, you hear because you understaff. You're understaffed because don't nobody want to work in Dalton. So when we talk about, yes, the police, they are doing their job. When I called you, you came immediately. So I've never said that. But at the same time, when something is happening, Y'all have to stop saying it's politics. It's not politics. This is reality. Have you looked at the bank account lately? Do you know how much money is in there? Because I don't understand why a resident is coming telling us that we owe her five hundred dollars from five months ago. So have you looked in the bank account? Well, let me go. On. It's 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 a budget. They don't have unlimited. No one has unlimited funds. If all the money is going to one person's protection. So she can live this fantasy of being a president over protecting the rest of the people in Dalton. That's a problem. How does this goofball do, don't understand that? Like, how is he confused? Does he have eyes? Do he see four or five of them just carrying the mayor around all the all over the place? All, racking up thousands of dollars worth of, uh, of overtime? I don't know. Let me, 
Let me say this and then I'm gonna leave it alone because we can go back and forth. We don't have no, to. No, let me finish, trustee. We don't. Okay. Because when you say that, guess what? Because you said we're understaffed. We're understaffed because guess what? We're not at comparable salaries for a police officer coming here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're I let you talk. We're understaffed because every time you get up here, you trustee house, trustee Brown, trustee Norwood, get up here and say no to something to be said yes. Okay. You talk about that guess what? The bank account. But the money that goes into the bank account or could go to the bank account, you you vote down. So don't don't tell me, don't tell me that the money ain't there. I'm telling you what my guys are doing. Okay. They are risking their lives for something that can be settled right here in this room. Okay. That's all I'm saying to you. That's fine. So when you say that and you get on TV and you say what you say, don't do that. And in, anything don't, I said, I will really let them finish. Don't do that. You know okay. why? Because it not only hampers the investigation, it yep. puts my guys at yep. risk. Okay. Yep. Facts. Okay. So only thing I'm saying to you is if you want to make a difference, don't make it personal because you're making it personal against the mayor. It's not personal. Let me, let me finish because you just talked about all the TV stuff. Mm -hmm. Guess what? She's not doing anything that hasn't been done. We don't talk about the other communities to where it's, guess what? They have multiple shootings. Kind of like the same shooting that just happened up at AutoZone. Happened in Richmond Park, but you never heard of it yep. because you're always attacking the mayor. So don't tell me it's Perhaps. not personal because it is. Because if it wasn't personal, you would support what's going on. Yep. And if I offend you, please forgive me. But let's talk real. Vote I'm, for what is right, not for what you want. Yep. I'm not offended at all. And thank you so much. Good night. Yeah, I think that I think that was the mayor that actually was clapping. Um, Tevin with the 199 super chat. Appreciate you. The cop is nothing but a big ass bully. Clearly, just the way he's speaking, the way his his deposition, and he is fully supporting the mayor. You know, who cares what the mayor, again, who cares what the mayor does? He did not answer the the charge that the trustee Belcher just says, you know, that she has too much security. We running out of money. Like you have a response to that? Who cares about that? Just give us, just sign off so we can, uh, you know, get a better salary for the cops. Well, maybe if there wasn't so much overtime being thrown out, maybe the salary of the police officers could increase. I mean, all this is, it seems like, logical to me. I don't know what you guys think, but he's stuck on, you guys just don't like the mayor. Don't make it personal. Don't make it about politics while well, he's basically politicking right now. They have, they're all running the same play. A person that's running the food pantry who works for the mayor is sending threats on Facebook. Not bright because that's a threat. And if this is the kind of people she surrounds herself with, that's why we have so many problems. Actually, I'm going to show the video of the, of the person I want to talk about that Basically, just sent a threat to one of the Dalton residents. I can't believe that he did that, but we're going to. I want to show you who this person is. The Super Mayor is going to be introducing this man that we'll be talking about right now. Here's Key Price, and he's going to talk to you about the food pantry. So come on down, okay, KB. Come on up. Gotta make a little room for me. <laughs> yep. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me, Super Mayor. Welcome. First, I would like to say thank everybody that's tuning in and give you a brief history on the food pantry. When I started at the food pantry, it was approximately. 150 to 200. All right. All right, whatever. So Keith Price runs the food pantry, as you see up there with the super mayor. And I've noticed him on the Dalton's um, politics channel, defending the mayor, saying, you know, saying things like when all the, I guess all the information comes out and you guys are wrong, are you guys going to apologize? Like a lot of pro tenured rhetoric. And, you know, everyone has a right to have their own opinion, even if it's ridiculously wrong. And that's fine, right? I mean, everyone's able to speak and and do that. Cool. That, that's 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 not a problem at all. And that again, that's fine. You want to back up your 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 mayor? I mean, obviously the person that puts you in this job. Okay, you you're drinking the Kool Aid. I mean, that that's fine. But the issue is when you go beyond that and you are just saying some wild stuff. So this came from Sherry. She po posted this, and she had to go to the police station. This is a message sent directly to her. It says, hey, Sherry, you're so funny. Only slave man's with Zuck. I think Frank Zuckernelli is what he's talking about. You all kiss whatever, whatever. You're being pimped by others who want their seat back. Then this is where it, this is where it gets like super disgusting. Aw, send who you don't like at me because I'm sure you would want to see your loved ones again, ma'am. I'm going I'm to leave that up there. It seems like this mayor just surrounds herself with criminals. Thugs, goons, not bright ones either. That's a threat. A person that's running the food pantry who works for the mayor is sending threats on Facebook. Not bright because that's a threat. And 
if this is the kind of people she surrounds herself with, that's why we have so many problems. From, from the people spending this money, the all the lavish trips, the, 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 the big charities, all of these things, this is kind of like a, a, a bit of a microcosm of, of all the problems where she's hiring people with criminal records, failed businesses, bankrupts. We'll talk a little bit about Keith Freeman not, not remembering one of his jobs when he filed bankruptcy. All the, and now it's just thug activity, threatening people because they're being critical of this administration. I hope he gets a criminal charge. Keith Price has a job in the township. Trustee Stan Brown has a job along with his wife in the township. There's so much corruption here. And does he think he can just do this because he's looking at leadership? I'm protecting the, I'm protecting the super mayor. She does what she wants to do. I'll do what I want to do. I'll just th throw threats on Facebook. He, th he thinks he's going to be okay because he lives where a place where he thinks he's going to be taken care of. But this, this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. You can't do that. I mean, regardless of the fact that he probably needs to go back to school because yeah, it's a little difficult to even figure out what he was saying, but right there saying, because I'm sure you would want to see your loved ones again. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they don't. I think, I think most are good people. I don't think anyone is saying this is something that's acceptable. Thank you, Craig Craig Nate. Highly unacceptable. This person needs to not work definitely for public service. He needs to, he needs to have the police visit his home and see what's going on with there and see what other threats, what other things he has been doing. It's, it's, it's pretty disgusting. And I couldn't believe it when I saw it. This happened yesterday. And I'm looking, I'm like, this guy can't be serious. This is the same guy as the super mayor talking about the $1 million giveaway and forced him to go on camera because remember, super mayor and Keith Freeman is trying to stop Dr. Scott in her pantry because everything she does is responding to what's going on, on in the media. So when a story pops up, it makes her look bad. Again, her image is more important than, I guess, helping the people. So when she gets a when she see a story that's critical of her, she tries to do cleanup, and that's why he brought this goofball into the mix to talk about how much how much food they're providing and all that type of thing. This right here, he should be fired. So I'm sure the mayor's going to see this and see other YouTubers talking about this and other content creators, and hopefully the the, the mainstream, little bit of mainstream media. How does he stay in 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 his job? But we have again a pattern of her hiring not the best, the worst people. When, when everyone was able to go up on that meeting and all and that script from, from all of her enablers, all the lackeys saying the same thing, to a point when Justin House just said, this is all a script. You guys are all saying the same thing. Even Bel Belcher, uh, Trustee Belcher, this is all a script. She flips out, talks about, I'm the leader. You guys can't lead anything. I helped you. You have to give respect. You guys want respect? Y'all have to give. I am your leader. I am the one that won by 82%. I am the one that carry you, trustee Jason House, you and a belcher that never wins anything over the hump. That's why you guys have your seats that you have before you. So when you get in these board meetings and you act a fool, y'all should stop. Because at the end of the day, all we've been doing, everybody is fighting since I became mayor. If y'all want to be leaders, y'all got to act like y'all know y'all not leaders. Y'all follow us. Stop. And just that kind of uh, narcissistic behavior. But at the same time, this is not acceptable. And it's there's just so much, it's so much rotting uh, coming from this administration. Uh, Paul Roberts says the media responds to our complaints, the AG and the Cook County state attorneys don't. That's one thing that I am really surprised because that's one of the comments I see so often in many of the videos that have been, are made. They're saying, how, why is this taking so long for this to be corrected? It's pretty obvious of what's going on. And I do believe, this is my opinion, that I, I do believe that it's, it's the systemic and it's political. At this point in our society, we put politics, of, or the most powerful people put politics over anything. So if your, Demo your fellow Democrat is doing something that's harming lots of people, I mean, people are getting hurt, people are dying, and you don't want to pursue it because, well, that's, a, that's all on our team. Uh, we don't want the other side to say, look how corrupt this side is. Like, that's not the point. Beyond just the, the politics, we are assessing that this person probably is not fit for office. The people that she surround herself are not fit for these jobs. They are plucked out of making small amounts of money, now making tons of money, and now their loyalty has been brought for money because they would most of these people that she put in power would never make that kind of money on their own. So they fall right along with the with the mafia style dictator style of governance. This cannot continue. We continue to to shine a light on this. That's the only way we can get get some kind of accountability being addressed. Regardless of where your political allegiance is, 
Because I know one of the, one of the comments that I see constantly is about Democrat this and Republican that. But you can tell if you put politics over people, this will happen. Whether you know whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, we need to root out people who are unsuit or unsuited for governing. And I think that's that's where we are. So we're gonna keep on gonna keep a track of us. And you believe, Keith, if you're watching this, I'm sure you will. I can invite you. You come on to the live stream and to defend your mayor, defend all the the lavish spending. The, the billboards all over the place that's helping her politically. The fact that the cops, these police officers, so much has happened, no accountability. Like, answer this. Like, okay, you're saying that she's doing well and she's doing great. Explain it. Come on. And I'll send you a message on Facebook. Come on in and, and we could talk about it. And because and, I'd be honest, I don't know too many people who are actually are defending her except the people who are getting paid by her. You know, I go through as much comments as possible. Um, other than some of the, the comments that are, are jokingly or trolly or whatever, trollish, most people are like, this is this is crazy. So you're a minority in this situation. So I invite you to come on, explain this this message you sent to a resident. Why did you do it? And what what's what's going on here? If you're man enough, so you, you're tough enough to send that to her, you can come on and show your face as you show your face on that on the Super Mayor Soupsticks and come and explain your actions. Because this is a coward. That's my opinion. And I think a lot of people probably agree with me. But you can come in, Keith Price, and we can have a respectful conversation. Explain this. I, I don't know what else more I can say about that, but explain it because I don't see how that helps. And hopefully you get some kind of call because I, I this, this is just, this is out of hand. This is totally, totally unacceptable behavior. And this pushes the narrative that people are being intimidated, not just by the police, but the people who are running this administration. Hey guys, it's Superman. Yep, that part. Superman to me, a Henry the People's Mayor. And this was the stuff they don't show you. And this is what um, obsessed me with news, fake news that is. I told they fake because they show you all negative stuff. And I don't know nobody that want to live that way, being negative all the time. What do I think happened in this case? Tiffany has demonstrated characteristics like self-centeredness, grandiosity, shallowness, a sense of entitlement. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. This is what people don't show you. See, it's called Just Ice Rink. I want to show the world the things that I actually do in my town. I actually love on the people. I actually show them that they mean everything to me. She believes her election to mayor signaled her transformation to royalty. She is now the undisputed leader of the kingdom of Dalton. Her authority must not be challenged. And that's the part that you have to stay tuned for. Because what you haven't seen lately is you haven't heard your super mayor speak yet. You haven't heard that, right? So I try to tell people, stop listening to the mess. Because messy people, they, they just need company. Misery needs company. She will rule with an iron fist and crush her opponents. All the treasure in the kingdom now belongs to her. Because at the end of the day, I think I've been showing the world, showing the village, showing... It would be more appropriate if the residents of Dalton had a security detail to protect them from Tiffany, not the other way around. The bill is due for these vehicles that are going to be repossessed. Let's check out that story. Some of those vehicles being threatened with repossession include Village of Dalton police cruisers and accessories that the village financed back in 2019, much like the one right behind me. Tonight, some Village of Dalton trustees and their legislative council are calling for answers and accountability. This is so embarrassing. How can she fix this problem other than running down there and, and paying it? This is embarrassing. Police vehicles are being repossessed. Then also, I'll show you the, the clip. Uh, but you guys check, checked out the Dalton Trustees uh, video, uh, Jason House, the interview with Jason House. They they show how the the guy, the damn police chief, is lying, saying no, that's there's no problem with the with the cars being repossessed. What are you talking about? How is he? He must be lied. He's he being lied to, or he's just a part of the dictatorship that's happening. But we'll we'll play that right after this one. There's no accountability. In yet another shock to Village of Dalton trustees, a letter falling on their desks dated February 14th. Representatives from Kansas State Bank threatening to repossess 13 village vehicles, saying more than $76,000 is overdue. Climbing. The Board of Trustees approved payment in May of 2023. But where that loan payment went that was due nine months ago is anyone's guess. Lawyers for the bank now warning the village, pay up or be ready for repossession agents to take the vehicles, which include... Even if you are running a dictatorship, right? Like, you need to have the police have the vehicles. The police need to be able to move quickly to do the all the unethical things that, and all the illegal things you tell them to do to stalk this person and stalk that person, give that, that business owner a, a problem because they said something to you and like, they need, they need wheels. 
They can't, how are they going to harass people? What are you going to do? Scooters? Mopeds? You know, yeah, the chief said I took care of that. Like, what, the chief was like, we are you talking about? We'll play that right after this. But, it, it, you know, you, most dictators, the one thing they take care of is the military, which is important. To a point where that's why so many people are so fascinated with the story. It just, it's getting worse, but it's like it's getting better where she's getting exposed and she is getting held accountable, but she is not handling it well. So again, she's talking about, you haven't heard me speak yet. Because what you haven't seen lately is, you haven't heard your super mayor speak yet. You haven't heard that, right? Okay, first of all, all you do is talk. I don't know what you're talking about. But you have opportunities to speak, and then you don't. So from this situation, Hanyard holds illegal township meeting. So again, the very transparent mayor is holding meetings, and no one was able to check out the meeting. It was, it, it was basically... A bunch of nonsense happening. The Thornton Township was supposed to have a public meeting because these meetings are public, right? But obviously things didn't go as planned. Tiffany Hanger's security force, remember her secret service, made people go to the basement saying that the meeting was there, but that was a lie. Uh, one trustee got locked out until the meeting started. People, including the media, couldn't get into the meeting room. Hanger didn't make sure that the audio was working, the video was working. This was an illegal meeting because remember, public business is being talked about here and no one knows. Well, again, is this some kind of dictator meeting where you have your generals and you just throw out crazy orders? So in my opinion, yeah, I believe that the meeting is, was against law. You cannot make any decisions. Any decisions made in that meeting should not be null and void. It should be canceled. They said one town resident said that the meeting ended very quickly and they found out later that almost no one was in that main room. So this shows a big problem that how this meeting was run. More of the same where we are realizing that Tiffany Hayard is, she's feeling the heat. The walls are closing in, and I do agree with Matt Ology. Yeah, she's she's behaving like a mob boss, right? The mob boss, they make sure if they have a meeting, they make sure that only the people who are trusted are in that meetings, making sure there's no video or audio can record their, their discussions because they're doing some nefarious shit. Yes, it, the secret squirrel meeting. Sherry says, she says the trustees' meetings are secret squirrel meetings, and she literally had one. At least the secret squirrel meeting, right, was taped. We heard them talk. They had... People there, they had the public, they had residents that wanted to speak. So that, you know, I rather, at least if that squirrel meeting, at least she has some kind of video evidence. This was no video, no audio. She wanted to do what she wanted to do. And it's pretty obvious, like, how that's this is a bad idea, right? Like, um, we could talk about it, but no access. You couldn't get into the meeting. Even if it was supposed to be open to anyone, you were just basically sent, sent away. You know, no voice. You didn't have a chance to speak because, again, you didn't know what was happening. Obviously, it was confusing, probably on purpose. And then they make it a quick and closed off thing. If you're a mayor, it's just not, it's not a good look. It's, she is doing her own secret squirrel meetings and that needs to be called out. It needs to be called out, you know? Yeah, that's a very Nito Brown move to, to have that kind of situation where you're hiding the meetings and also the other stuff that she's been doing. That, that weird salary maneuver. She proposed a nearly 90% cut in the salary for her position, but only if she's not the one filling it. That's not a joke. That's not like, that's not a Onion article. She proposed a nearly 90% cut in her salary for her position if she leaves the position. But if she doesn't leave the position, she maintains her salary. You can't make this up. Along with the, the lavish spending. I just you really can't believe it. So hopefully, so that, that meeting was not a real meeting at this point. You can't, you know, the public needs to have access. The media has access. This is not going to get any better. So I, I expect the next regular board meeting to be quite of the affair. Like I said, we have, we have multiple mainstream media outlets i'm checking out this story it's i don't know how she what's she gonna do in the next one you guys in the comments do you think that she's going to mess the audio the video up again she's gonna bring more plants to walk in and talk about how great she is like what, what's going to be the 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 dialogue with the people that's on her side are going to basically do the same thing you guys are messed up it's your fault like i'm, I'm really eagerly anticipating what's going to happen I, th I think i may I think I may do like a live stream, like restream of that. Cause it has to be, it, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely insane. Uh, Matt, so he, she will distort it somehow. Yeah. She's going to do something cancel due to illness. Um, Stephanie says, I think she's going to cancel next meeting. Yeah. I, I, I think she, I think she has some issues going on. When is the meeting? Sherry, if she's in here, maybe she'll throw the date up. It's definitely soon. It's definitely going to be soon, but I, I, yeah, it's most likely, I think I'll go with Stephanie. I think she's going to cancel the meeting. She's going to cite something. Because the amount of people who that's interested in this meeting now, oh man, like uh, everyone wants to, everyone has some questions. Like what's going on again, being shut out that, that meeting, it just, it's making her look worse 
and bringing more people to this crazy, crazy story. What happened when you tried to go upstairs to the board meeting? The security guard won't let me up. He just stands at the bottom of the stairs like this. Yes, like a dictator, right? That's you got got your you got your military. They say no, no one passes you. And, you know, you continue to do what your illegal stuff, right? Politicians don't always like to hear from the public, but some South Suburban residents say controversial supervisor and mayor Tiffany Henyard has gone too far. Yeah, they say she took extraordinary, potentially illegal measures to prevent them from speaking at a public meeting. Dame Placco has more. The sign outside its headquarters says, Welcome to Thornton Township, people working with people. But when residents showed up last night to speak at a public board meeting, they got anything but a warm welcome. When I arrived, there was security here. He was standing at the bottom of the stairs, preventing anybody from going up to the boardroom. I asked. First of all, shout out to Stephanie. Great interview uh, last week. And I think what she said was very, really important, especially at the end about community involvement. So I know that the, the trustees had another event, I think team with the trustees, and that looked, that was a full house. The more people need to speak up, even if it's, uncomfortable because of all of the intimidation, all of the weird stuff that's happening. I mean, I guess now you probably can do it if there's no police cars, they can't drive anywhere. I mean, I'm a terrible joke, but that idea that you need to be able to be more active in your community, see, you know, ask questions and hold the people in power, hold them accountable. Smith, the meeting was downstairs. He replied, yes. Stephanie Wiedemann and a handful of other residents wanted to speak directly to Thornton Township Supervisor Tiffany Henyard, also the mayor of Dalton, who's generated controversy for spending hundreds of thousands of tax dollars on trips, police security, billboards, and her own personal charity. I'm just curious to see who makes the decisions about how our tax dollars are being spent. But they never got that chance. After being blocked from going to the boardroom upstairs, they were sent to the basement where they were told the township board board meeting would be held. It wasn't. They asked for a sign-up sheet for public comment. Never got it. And before they knew what had happened, the four-minute meeting upstairs was over and Henyard was gone. Four minutes? A four-minute meeting? All right, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't think there was a meeting. I, I don't think. I mean, that's the fastest squirrel meeting, secret squirrel meeting I have ever heard. Um, John Lewis says, according to Wikipedia, squirrel meetings are divided into three different types of squirrel meetings. You left me in a cliffhanger, John. What, what kind of, well, what, what are three types of squirrel, secret squirrel meetings? I mean, this is the fastest one. This is like a, it's not a meeting. It's more like a conversation, it's a secret squirrel conversation. You know, I'm not going to get into. Without hearing from her constituents. They are violating our rights. I pay taxes here. I have a right to get up and speak whether this administration likes it or not. And not only were the residents shut out, so was a local newspaper reporter who came here to cover the meeting. Um, I was told by a security guard that I was not allowed upstairs where the boardroom meeting is. Josh Bootsma of the Lansing Journal says residents deserve to know how elected officials are spending their money. Thornton Township is the largest township in Illinois, and so there are a lot of people that are affected by the decisions, the financial decisions that this township makes. Even Thornton Township trustee Chris Gonzalez, a frequent Henyard critic, was ordered out of the boardroom until the meeting began. Do you think any laws were broken last night by the way they handled the public? Well, definitely. I mean, if somebody wants to speak, this is a public, it's a public meeting, it's a public building, they should be able to come in. And the residents say they'll yeah. file a complaint with the Illinois Attorney General's office for violating the Open Meetings Act. Our attempts to contact Henyard also went nowhere. In South Holland, Dane Placco, Fox 32 Chicago. Crazy. Doing illegal secret squirrel meetings. This must stop. Um, John says, look, yeah, so the secret squirrel meeting, the super secret squirrel meeting, and a super duper four minute secret squirrel meeting. <laughs> yeah, actually, you broke that down very, very well, actually. Well, that's not going to work. That's not going to cut it. When at this point, I would say a lot of the whole country is looking into this situation. They're following this story. So you're not going to be able to do the things that, at least for the mayor, she's not going to be able to do the same things that she was doing before. The, the, the microscope is on her. So she can be goofy with the, with the four minute meetings and all this type of thing and the redirections and stuff like that. But I think now it's hard to do that and continue to do that. So the walls are closing in. You cannot have a closed public meeting. It's it, it don't even the words don't even come together. Closed public means open. You can't just do what you want. Do what you want to do. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And it's just the more bad stories that's coming out. The you know the more it helps get this person to get the, at least answer to some of these questions. Hold them accountable. Going back to that video with the Dalton trustees of Jason House. You definitely guys want to check it out. You definitely want to check it out because it's a difference between how he speaks 
in how you hear the mayor speak. I think it's 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 extremely important to have that, you know, because you think everyone is is everyone, you know, that's why it's great to hear from Stephanie and and, and all these other great people, because there's a difference between how they speak and how the mayor speaks. Jason criticizes the mayor use of the catchy slogan, suggesting that they lack real substance. They do not contribute to solving the village financial issues and is not improving the, the government. Um, he also talked about the financial situation, the lack of transparency. He highlights a significant problem with transparency, particularly with the absence of regular financial reporting to, to trustees and the residents, because this is taxpayer money. That's not being taken care of as well. And I didn't know that, that Jason House had years, I guess over a decade of financial experience, and he's not using any of that because they're not even telling him anything. So he has experience in banking and managing finances, which at this point could be very valuable, but Tiffany don't want to hear that. She, she don't want to deal with that. She's again, she's back. She's doing her little secret squirrel meeting. The trustees want more information. They, they're trying to fail. They're working and trying to get those monthly financial reports to the residents in the past. They're trying to foster community engagement and transparency. When they had a, a meeting that the mayor would, did not want to attend, they, it was on video. You see the people talking. It was a big difference between how he runs things and, and how the other trustees are running things and how the mayor is running things. This current lack of regular reporting is just a step back for everyone involved. So I will put that link in to check out that interview if you haven't, because I think it's extremely important to realize there are people in Dalton who understand what's going on, at least, in, or even in township that knows what's going on. It's not just this one mayor out here just losing her mind. And, and you think, well, everyone is be, everyone's behaving this way. They, they voted for this. No, it's not that cut and dry. It's not that black and white. Can her income be garnished? I don't, I don't have no idea. I won't tell you I'm not no legal expert. I mean, if, if she could just get indicted, that, that'll be. That'll help. Her income will be garnished if she has to pay for a really powerful attorney or she has to pay for an attorney in general. That would help the income to be garnished. Carolyn says she won't cancel. She is full of herself. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, Tiffany's minions are disliking the truth. Yeah, especially with uh, Keith Freeman, Keith Price, um, a few of the trustees that, that spoke in that board meeting that basically defended everything that she was doing and giving, I guess, criticizing the trustees for not basically telling her, hey, you guys let her just spend the money. Stop, stop holding up the works here. She's doing great work. And you guys are, you guys are the bad guys. Max table people's super scammer. Oh yeah. The, the names just come so easily, right? Like Sherry says she should be removed while she is being investigated. Yeah, I agree. Um, John with the $20 super chat. Appreciate you. Uh, great coverage on the situation. Keep up the great, good work. Thank you for coming in supporting. I mean, again, if you guys didn't engage and watch a lot of these videos, not just obviously not mine, but everyone else that's been talking about this. Now these videos, they a lot of content creators, political ones, this guy, psych psychiatrist, they all are engaged. And that's, that's what brought a lot of this to light to that New York post is flying over. Attention brings some action. We need enough attention on this story. Cause remember the very time I saw this was at least a couple of weeks ago from pink books lessons. And she was putting out a lot of this content. And then Nate, the lawyer put this out and I'm like, wow, this is, this is a fascinating situation. Like, is this actually real? And then you spend some time just watching a lot of the news reports on WGN and, and then some of the community members, uh, some of the residents, you know, checking out, emailing and saying, yeah, this, not only this is happening, but 40 other things are happening. So there's a lot happening, a lot of stuff that I can't say yet, but things are in motion. So I see, a, I know I see a lot of comments on like how she's still in power and what, what, what the FBI is doing. You guys, things are, the walls are closing in. That's all I can say. The walls are closing in. Things are going in the, the right direction to a certain extent. And that's why you see her behavior. Just look at her behavior. See every social media post, how she's still trying to portray a sense of control. She's still trying to portray a sense that everything is fine. They're all just liars. They're just, they're just trying to take me down. And if they try to take me down, they're trying to take you down because look how awesome this skating rink is like, come on, all the great leaders in time for what JFK, you know, like, you know, Winston Churchill, all these amazing, amazing leaders, right? And look at my skating rink. God damn it. Like this, this is it. This is the height of progress. You know, these other people are just trying to take me down and taking you down. So that that's where we are with that situation. You know, the people, the residents of Dalton are not stupid. They have went after they went to media. They have went to their representatives. They went to the attorney general. They've went to these, these sources and said, look at what's going on here. This has been going on for years, years. Hey, there's a lot of money being missing and we don't have no access to see what's going on. You think 
something should be jumped on in, in, in weeks, not months and years. Why? Why is it that it's so slow? Some people have mentioned, is it because of the political nature that we have, where if my team, I see something on my team that they're doing something wrong, I choose to ignore it because we're in a political season right now, you know, and we can't have our side look bad. Hopefully that's not the case, but a lot of people do feel that way. So, I mean, let me know in the comments, do you guys think it's a political reason why everyone is so slow to remove this person, to prosecute this person, regardless of the damage he's doing, is because of our political climate. Some people say it's true that that's, that's what's happening. Yeah, illegal meetings, firing people for not following protocol, abuse of township funds, and she's still running around here. Everything is good, yeah. And, and at least what we're doing by engaging with the comments, calling, involving, especially people there, being more involved than you probably ever have before in your community, you're showing her, you're showing everyone that this is not acceptable, that we're mad, we're not happy with this, and we want to be as loud as possible so action can continue. So even now, as things are getting a little bit tight for Tiffany and she's and she's doing all this weird stuff and probably gonna cancel that meeting next week, that you still gotta keep pressing on. You still gotta put the foot in the neck until something actually, actually happens. Because yes, right now she's feeling, she's feeling a little heat. Keith Freeman is feeling a little heat. But you can't, you can't let go of, of that situation. Sherry says, silence is support. She's definitely being protected by someone. And I would love to know who, like what? Like what is really going on? Is this going to even be deeper than what we just see is some narcissist that just was able to manipulate a few people like by giving them jobs that they probably didn't earn. And she was just going to, you know, spend a lot of money and then do what? Leave, escape, go to a different, like what, you know, where, what is that end game there? And the fact that she hasn't been prosecuted, regardless of all the evidence to just suggest that she should be, who is holding her? Who's, who is protecting her? Is it deeper than, than what we're even talking about? Pretty in Pink says, I think is extremely deep, right? Like, I don't know. I mean, that's something that hopefully that comes to light because that's even more, I mean, it's, you know, what she's doing is terrible, but people who are allowing her to do this, the, the whoever that has the ability to stop this and didn't stop it, not even calling it out, that could be even more nefarious. So we'll see, we'll definitely see. Let me see. That's another thing too. Like, you know, any, in any investigation, you start to pull some people out and say, Hey, listen, what do you know? And what you can tell us can help you. And that's where all criminal organizations kind of break apart because people start getting deals and they start to do what they have to do to save their own asses. I hope she loves her $175,000 Tahoe. Maybe, but there's, there's still a lot going on. It's again, some stuff that I heard and things are still going to be coming to light. And right now with all the media surrounding her, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult for her to continue this, this, this for, for too long. That's all I'll say with that from the vendors still not getting paid. And I would like to see what happens to those vehicles. I know Sherry said that she thinks they're going to hide those vehicles. I will, I will be really interested to see what she, what they're going to do about this situation. You know, it, it, it has to, I want to see, I mean, this, this, this is the thing. I don't know what's going on here, but I, I would like to know what, what they're going to do. The fact they had to pay that got to pay that bill. The bill's not paid and they want those vehicles back. You know, car possessions are high. Like they're, they're, they're increasing all across the country. People are, are getting their cars repossessed. This is not necessarily one situation. People, these, these people want their cars back if you're not paying for them. So this is the part like they need to get their money back. So I would love to see what's going to happen. I'm telling you all the residents of Dalton need to show up by the hundreds and keep showing up until the media is there and keep reporting them. I hear you. I hear you. But also like, you know, talking to a lot of the residents, the, when you see the police behaving in ways that's not for the people, it does give you a pause to say, if I say something, then my, especially if you're a business owner and you've already seen how business owners have been treated because of the disagreements with her and her personality type, again, speculating that she's vindictive. If you are public with your criticisms, she will do something that stops a lot of people from trying to even speak. And then she hires really, really stupid pantry. You know, you know the guy who runs the pantry to threaten people on social media and, and phone calls. It keeps people from showing up. But I think I still agree with you that they still need to show up, even if you are fearful because you doing like, well, you speaking up, nothing changes. Like we, at this point, I think the people, the people in Dalton have forced the public at large to talk about the situation. 
If they didn't say anything, she would have completed her four years. How much money could have been eroded from this and nothing would have changed. It was the people in, in Dalton emailing content creators, emailing the, the, the news media, emailing, you know, the higher levels of government. A lot of people did put the effort and obviously the trustees to fight, to understand, to again, be public. They have a YouTube channel to broadcast and bring the receipts of the fact that she did spend that much money on the Tahoe, that she isn't paying the bills that there's receipts of emails saying I'm getting invoices. They're saying I'm not getting paid. I'm forwarding these invoices to you and you're still not doing anything. Like, so all this helps, you know, continue to fight. Brilliant disguise says, and the police are too aggressive with people in me. And I've seen video clips of that, of just, just the fact that you, you hang out in a meeting, right? It's supposed to be a public meeting. It's supposed to discuss some of the local government stuff, you know, it happens across the country. And usually you probably, you may see just one or two police officers just hanging out, you know, but if you have, you know, more police officers in the meeting that's possibly outside fighting crime, that's a problem. That's a problem. It just shows her intimidation factor of if you do something or say something while well, I'm here and I got my police force, we can do something to you. Donna says, I'm wondering if she's hiding money for her to have when she gets out of jail or her mind for a false investigation. She has to know that she'll be ousted. Then what? Will all our money tucked away? That's why I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's a good question. What is the end game? It could be no end game. And she is just thinking that she's doing a, a great, great job. That all this is this incompetence. It's, it's ego it's narcissism because you know, narcissists think they're brilliant, even though they're not, you know, they, they could be very smart, but sometimes they think they're too smart and think they can outsmart everyone. And usually that goes in the wrong direction, but she could probably, it could be just incompetence. She just thinks she's doing the right job because again, she, she built that really nice ice skating ring. Someone is leading Tahoe uh, Teflon Tiff to believe that she's a thug. She really believes that she what she's doing is nothing wrong and she's not going to jail. It took me a while to believe it, but she's delusional. Well, hopefully soon enough, that delusion will, will slap her in the face because even if she is hiding money, even if she is hiding money, eventually you got to pay a lawyer because they're going to, you know, when, when, when I think when the curtain goes up and the FBI is there, you're going to have to defend yourself and you're going to need really decent, at least quality legal, you know, guidance by the lawyers and the lawyers will, they, they're expensive, but $300 an hour for like, I forgot the rates for some, especially if you're a good lawyer, which she's going to need that, that money she's tucked away. She's going to have to spend it. She's going to spend it. And the, there's no, there's no ice skating rink. That's going to solve this problem. It's not going to make anything um, easier for her to understand or get away with this. Dalton residents. I am reporting for duty. There's um, a ton of misinformation. I try not, I really do not try to feed into it, but I want to just make sure that I clearly state for the record, I've never been arrested or walked out by anybody. And my short response to some of those residents was, there's one person on the board who has a mugshot, and we know who that person is. FBI agents have questioned at least a half dozen people, including business owners, a former Dalton employee, and an elected official as part of an investigation into Mayor Henyard. Why do you believe the mayor has attempted to, or shut down your business, basically? Because I wouldn't donate the money anymore. I wouldn't give her any more money. I mean, so does it surprise any of us that when she been able to get more power, more resources, that she will do what she's been currently doing. Allegations of corruption and political retaliation being lobbed at her from trustees, business owners, and even the attorney general's office. And and I'm glad to hear that the uh, FBI is out here. I want them to hurry up with this investigation and get the grand jury to indict this woman for spending all our tax dollars. The actions of Tiffany Hayard has uh, captured, obviously, our, the world's attention, right? And all for the wrong reasons, becoming emblematic of the type of behavior that citizens are just unwilling to tolerate. Everyone's just tired of it, even people who don't live there. And, you know, Hayard's alleged misuse of power and corruption has been detailed for about two years. It's disgraced her office. And at this point, I think people are looking for some accountability, provide some relief for the residents who have been dealing with this. I think the FBI have been around for a while, but I think as this case becomes more and more public, people always want to ask what is what the FBI is doing? Because the money has been, has been spent, it's probably still spending, and you need that investigation to kind of come swiftly. So let me show you the, the video that I saw about the, the bars that were shut down because they had opinions on Tiffany Hay that she didn't appreciate. So let me share, let me show that video real quick. Someone seen you go in there and then two hours after your story airs, 
that police are at both of these establishments. More controversy in South Suburban Dalton. Two popular bars shut down by police just hours after the owners talked to Fox 32. A village trustee also says it's because they're not financially supporting Dalton's mayor, Tiffany Henyard. Here's Dean Placa with the latest on the corruption investigation. Is it coincidence or retaliation? Both of the Dalton bars that were raided and shut down last night, we visited the day before as part of our ongoing investigation into allegations of political corruption in Dalton. Isn't that crazy, though? Miss Stubbs, we're talking about nothing can surprise me. Okay, like the pattern behavior, right? You, you, they had some people talking, Pablo's Bar and I guess Ricky Bar and Cafe. They were shut down right after they talked to the media about some of the issues that they've been dealing with as a, like a larger collection of what's going on. This is a pattern of broad harassment tied to the lack of financial support for this mayor. They just rushed in here, put police at the front of the door like they was doing a raid on the drug houses. A team of Dalton police officers raided and shut down Pablo's Bar and Cafe and Rinky's Bar and Cafe, located on Sibley, about a block apart. Everything going peacefully, nothing going on. It's like 10 police cars came in and they start pushing customers from here. And he said, if you don't leave, we're going to lock you up. Employees and owners say it's part of an ongoing campaign of harassment by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard that is costing jobs and money. Their business licenses have been stripped by Dalton, but they've continued to operate with a state license. I have like over 23 employees. They work from the local township. Now, end of the day, all the employees, they're going to lose them job. It's ridiculous. We all have mouths to feed. We all have kids. Uh, they're not giving us no explanation. On Monday, talking about vindictiveness so vindictive to a point where it's it's not even it's past the point of just rationale like when she shouts this order to go into those bars why there's not one person to sit back and say hey this is probably going to be a bad idea they're going to go back and talk to the media just just makes things worse but she she's not in our reality she's not there and I guess the people who are who are following these orders are just following the orders. They don't care either. We visited both Rinkies and Pablo's to ask about allegations. Their licenses were being held up for political reasons. Then last evening, we broke the story that FBI agents have questioned at least a half dozen people, including business owners, a former Dalton employee, and an elected official as part of an investigation into Mayor Henyard. Less than two hours after our story aired, police raided the two bars. Someone seen you go in there, and then two hours after your story airs, that police are at both of these establishments. Two hours. Two hours. So someone was already either spying. I think Stephanie Wienerman, she talked about there's just be cop cars just standing out there. This is a legit mafia style move. I guess you have spies everywhere. And what's the reason for the closure? Like, hey, you close these two bars, the ones who the media was talking to just two hours ago, they can't even come up with a reason why they, they took the license away. They're not even going to bother to provide a lie. They just came in, shut them down, act like they're criminals, act like they doing nefarious things. Like what the guy said, it's like we are a trap house. It's a business. Those are employees now. They're going to lose their ability to earn income, which is probably the worst time right now to, to lose any income right now. You know, this mayor just doesn't care. Dalton trustee Tammy Brown says she believes the raids are meant to send a warning to others not to talk. And she believes there's a reason so many Dalton businesses are having trouble getting their licenses renewed. I'm sure that they were asked to donate, make a donation, and most likely they didn't make a donation. So you don't get a chance to stay open if you don't pay, pay the queen's ransom. This is extortion, right? What happens when the mafia comes into the business and say, hey, I think you need to pay for some protection. And the person doesn't pay. What do they do? Make a problem. Throw a brick through the glass. Just cause enough to a point where you get the person to say, all right, I'll pay so you can stop messing with me. I have a business. I need to make money. I have employees. I have bills to pay. But that's some straight mafia move. That is crazy. There's definitely incompetence. There's, some, there's narcissism. And it's just greed. And everyone care more about themselves than actually serving the people, which is the worst kind of people that should serve public office. But let me see if I could find the slum lord video. I think he had it. Okay, so this is it. I'm going to show you guys. This is the pattern. And like what uh, Miss Stubbs said, if they knew the extent of failed businesses, the Good Burger, she just ripped off the name Good Burger. Like, you know, and that was a good movie too. But anyway, this is before she got to be a mayor. Um, of course she wouldn't be hired. But let me show, let me show you from the individual investor. I'm going to put his links and everything onto the 
on to the description below. Hopefully I remember that. Water leaks. Nearly three months ago, we first exposed serious problems in a South Suburban rental home owned by a Dalton Village trustee. Since then, the renter says it's only gotten worse. CBS2 political investigator Dana Kosloff has also learned that trustee is pocketing tens of thousands of your tax dollars for a house that's now unlivable. You need to get your clothes out for school. Jacqueline Smith and her two children called this hotel room home for almost a month. Ever since the Dalton house they were renting from village trustee Tiffany Henyard was slapped with this. A big red sign that I cannot live there because it's unlivable. Unlivable mostly because of mold. All mold. He's grown on the bottom of the shoes. is mold. Crazy. I mean, you look at that. Straight up slumlord. How terrible some landlords are taking care of properties. Um, in New York City, it's a big problem with how you just find so many of these people and they still do not take care of everything. They basically try to a band-aid, a bullet wound, basically, in terms of fixing these properties. But she's getting money from the getting money from Section 8, and she doesn't give a damn to fix anything that's happening. So a point to have mold. Mold, it, it's extremely dangerous to have in your home. I think that, that goes without saying. Extremely dangerous. Mold that Smith's landlord, Trusty Hanyard, pledged to immediately clean up after we first reported on the problem in August. And that's where... It started. Smith says workers came and painted. The house even passed a village inspection. Issues abated, notes Inspector Brian Thigpen in this September report. Except they weren't. It's horrible. Enter activist Dave. I think that I think they just painted over the mold. I'm looking at it. It looks like they didn't clean. They didn't take care of it properly. They just oh, just paint paint over it. Just paint over it. They they won't know. They won't notice that you did nothing to clean that. It just oh, just put just slap a coat of paint on it. David Lowry, who called Dalton directly. Suddenly, the house deemed livable on September 3rd became unfit for occupancy on October 15th. Lowry's theory? The trustee used her power uh, and influence. We caught up with Henyard before last week's board meeting. I want to talk to you about that house on Dearborn. Can we do that? Uh, my attorney's right here, so if you've got any questions, I have legal counsel. Talk so, to my attorney. So you want me to talk to your attorney and not you? You can't tell me how that house failed an inspection attorney, in October when right it just here. passed it beforehand? If you have any questions. So we did. The now, how lovely is that? She's for the people, remember? She, she, she loves on the people. She loves on them. You know, even the ones that, that are paying, getting money from the government to have a property so people can to live and not suffer. Well, she loves them though. To a point where someone's asking, hey, how are you able to, that's a good question. How are they passing inspection? I don't know. Good question. I have no idea. I mean, if it's that bad, which I'm, I'm sure it is, there's no way it should have passed inspection. And then go from not, it, it didn't pass. Now you got to get out. First, it was able to pass, you know, but just a few moments later, sometime later, no, it actually is. And you got to get out. It's, it's inhabitable. And she couldn't talk. Did she ever deal with like, being accountable for her actions? It just doesn't happen. Inspection process is within control of the village, not of the trustee. She has been instructed by the village attorney to be treated just like any other property owner. Dalton's attorney says the house's inspection history is under investigation and village records show a slew of past problems with the house passing, then failing, then passing inspections for years, even before the Housing Authority of Cook County approved it as a rental property eligible for government housing assistance money. Money, or Section 8. An eight employee says as a landlord, Henyard's received 36866 taxpayer dollars. Let's just, let's just pause it so you guys can see that, that kind of money that she received by... So she that went into her a bank account. And Sherry, I'm so glad you, you popped in because you told me this earlier about that. They don't even have certified code enforcement officers because they, they people who don't know what they're doing are passing it. So if you're not satisfied, you don't know what you're doing and you're passing something that shouldn't be passable. So, but she received $36,866.86 from Section 8. And she couldn't take some of that money to fix the, fix the issue for that family. Pattern of behavior. That's why I call her a predator. Pattern of, she does not care about anyone but herself. I mean, pretty obvious. I don't know if I would be able to sleep right if I had a property and it had mold in it and kids were in there or there was there was a fire risk or an electrical fire and i i and i didn't do anything about it i don't know if i could live with myself but some people are different and she received that, that amount of money i mean so does it surprise any of us that when she been able to get more power 
more resources that she will do what she's been currently doing. In Section 8 rent payments since 2017, when Smith moved in, money that kept coming even after this foreclosure notice was filed against the house last year. I'm staying in a hotel, so. All the while, Dalton taxpayers even helped foot the bill to keep Smith's family off the streets. He thought that, you know, the bill should be compassionate. She had nowhere to go. She had children. What we thought was to actually bill a trustee here. I learned this afternoon that Jacqueline Smith and her kids are now staying with a friend. The village is no longer paying for the hotel, and she doesn't have the money. Wow. So again, like we said, pattern of behavior. Paul Roberts, that's a fantastic line. She loves our money, and there's nothing we can do about it. But you guys are doing something, and I think the whole world has noticed. And now I, I am looking forward to the next board meeting and see how defiant she's going to, because she will come out defiant. I, I agree with Stephanie. She does not understand what she's doing is wrong. I think she thinks she's doing everything correct. And that's extremely dangerous. That's why the situation is happening with the bar and all the other businesses and her continuing just nonsense of using the police as her own personal force. I mean, taking a bunch of guys, calling them Homeland Security, taking a business, calling it Good Burger, spending how much money she spent on that ice rink. Now, I've heard reports it's two million. I don't know how much. That's a lot of money. Was it necessary? I mean, you know, the, the residents of Dalton can answer that question. But it just we, we're seeing more and more and hopefully they get into everything. And especially with this guy, Keith Freeman. Well, she wanted attention. And now she has, oh yeah, she has, she has a lot of it. I know that she likes pre-approved questions. I know that she fears the media. That being said, I already know that, you know, he had an agreement, right? So agreement aside though, yeah. agreement aside, he has an obligation, right? He has an obligation as a journalist to do the right thing. You also, uh, you have a charity that, um, uh, from the Attorney General's office, as I understand they sent a cease and desist letter to your foundation? I don't know nothing about that. Um, I'm not crazy, I'm not. The Attorney General's office hasn't reached out to you regarding your, found your foundation? So I wanna set the record straight. I don't have a foundation. Girl, that's your charity, stop. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, like everyone that's on the charity, you pay at some capacity or you sleep with. Let's just be honest. So we're gonna talk about at least some of the, just the lies that she threw out there and Roland didn't have anything to say. So it looks to me that this was a PR move, right? The Super Mary did not go to local media. She didn't go to, I think it was at Fox 32 in Chicago. Didn't go to the Lansing Journal. They're, you know, the places that actually locally are covering this stuff every day. So you would think if you want, this is a local story. It became international. But she's able to go to Roland Martin. I know Roland Martin's a big, a big deal. He has over a million subscribers. He's been on mainstream TV and all that type of thing. But that was bad, Roland. That was bad. And I know it's a local story. You have, you have some kind of news network. You have a lot of stories. But you came in like he had no idea what was going on. The man didn't do a lick of research. It's either he didn't do any research and he's not good at what he's doing. Or something else has happened and Roland allowed her to... Say whatever she want to say. No follow up with a question. Hey, well, hey, here's a clip. I mean, oh yeah, just watched Fox 32 YouTube channel. Contacted the Lansing Journal. I mean, that's what journalists are supposed to do. Like, hey, I have this interview with this mayor. Is anything she's saying going to be full of shit? Let, let me do some due diligence just to collaborate because you know what she's going to say. And you can counter with videos and articles about what's happening. And he he just, first, I don't know if he knew the woman. Did he know the woman before she came on? I got, it just, it was so bad. Before we went to the break, I talked about the, again, this this charity. And the Illinois Attorney General's office, this is what, this is from a CBS affiliate there, says that the accusation comes at the same time the Illinois Attorney General's office told Henry's charity multiple times in recent months to stop improperly soliciting donations because it had not registered with the state as required by law. Uh, and, and you said that's not your charity. Correct. Were you ever... For real, though? For real? So the, the super mayor that puts her name and likeness to everything that she... Everything she touches, it has to have her name on it, right? The $1 million giveaway, all the billboards, all the pamphlets, the, the podcast that she's going to be talking about later on. It says Tiffany cares. It has her big face on it. No, I don't know what you're talking about. No, what? What? What charity? What are you talking about? 
So they was so show the video here. I'm trying to understand this here. So this is a video of the of you marching with the charity. So what is this? So what they're not telling you is we literally walked to Springfield to create a bill to help anybody that suffered for cancer, whether it's the village of Dalton, Thorn Township, and then I increased it to the state of Illinois. And that bill will help people by giving them $10,000. And that's a bill that we actually are initiating and we're still working on it. When I went through the Republican states, the Republican areas, we didn't have any issue. Everybody was on board because everybody is suffering from cancer or knows someone that passed or is actually going through it. So that was the whole purpose of the walk, to basically bring awareness and bring people together. That's what the whole purpose of it is. But if you had, so there were folks with signs saying Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation. Who was that? What, what do you mean? It's everybody. Everybody was there. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, what is the Tiffany Henry Cares, Cares Foundation? You said it's not affiliated with you at all. Correct. Well, what is it? So someone made up a foundation. They named it after me. And they like my work that I do in the community. And it's called Tiffany Henry Cares. Okay. So that's what she says. Okay. So let's, let's play this video real quick. A shout out to Sherry. We have some documents as well. I just checked the email. So she said, I don't know, man. Someone just, someone loved me so much and they see what I've been doing. She is the Tiffany. I am the dream handyard, right? They looked at her like, man, she's great. She got, she made this really cool ice rink and she's doing all these things. Look, look at that Tahoe. We're going to make it in her name. She's so amazing. So let's see, let's see that that actually is true. I was really, really big on, as dear to my heart, it's a real big on Cancer Foundation. I have created Tiffany Henry uh, Cares Foundation. Let's repeat that again. Let's repeat. She said, and, and Roland, I don't know what you're talking about. Someone did it for me. Let's repeat the last, the last 10 seconds. I was really, really big on, as dear to my heart, it's a real big on Cancer Foundation. I have created Tiffany Henry uh, Cares Foundation. And what that is- It was that, who's speaking? That's, that's, that's Tiffany Hangin, right? She, you hear her talking about she created it. So what, what is she talking about now? Why Roland didn't do any research on this? He should have did more time to research what was going on. Entails is helping everybody within the 17 municipalities with services, such as uh, well services and resources, such as would you need help paying for chemo, radiation, your medicine, your wigs, your prosthetic, um, your breasts, uh, things of that nature, even helping you with housing. If you cannot live in Chicago uh, to benefit from this foundation, it's strictly for uh, people that live in the 17 communities. Uh, we are doing a cancer walk October 4th. Let's okay. hear what she said um, again. <laughs> so were you ever, so that was, so show, show the video here, I'm trying to understand this here. So this is a video of the, of you marching with the charity. So what is this? What they're not telling you is we literally walked to Springfield to create a bill to help anybody that suffered for cancer, whether it's the village of Dalton or township, and then I increased it to the state of Illinois. And that bill will help people by giving them $10,000. And that's a bill that we actually are initiating and we're still working on it. But if you had, so there were folks with signs saying Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation, uh -huh. who was that? What, what do you mean? It's everybody, everybody was there. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, what is the <laughs> Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation? You said it's not affiliated with you at all. Correct. Well, what is it? So someone made up a foundation. They named it after me, and they like my work. That I you, you made it up. You did. The somebody is you. The somebody is you. Thank you for this, this right here. Tiffany Henyard Foundation, Keith Friedman. All those names are people that I, at this point now, I'm getting more familiar with. Uh, Kamal Woods, I know I'm familiar with that name. Uh, William Moore. So is it someone, Keith? Like, either way, it's you. This is your foundation. You lied You lied to Mr. Rowland. How dare you? The Thornton Township put $10,000 in this, which doesn't make any sense because you don't use taxpayer money to start any kind of charity with your, you know the name of the person running everything. Someone didn't donate the $10,000. You did. You took it and put it in there. The Super Mayor is all about her image. The $10,000 came from the Thornton Township. The woman started the damn thing. They, but they weren't registered. Have you contacted them and told them you can't use my name improperly? Well, my lawyer's handling a lot of that stuff, so all I can tell you is that I'm not the one on anything. Wait, wait, she's not on anything? So who, all right, now we see Keith's name there. And Keith is basically her right hand man. But no one can just take your name and just start something. It, it doesn't work that way. 
So is she throwing Keith under the bus? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. It, it's just crazy. So I can tell you right now. So I'm just trying to ask it to the. So you say there's a foundation that's not registered, but it has nothing to do with you. Correct. That's true. Okay. That's so true. you're not aware of any of the. How is it not? It's nothing. It has nothing to do with her. It has nothing to do with her. Is she trying to throw Mr. Keith Freeman under the bus there, talking about her security detail, and didn't really explain all of the details of why she's in the position she's in, but she just said, well, it's in the collective bargaining agreement. I'm just following the rules. Like, okay, we'll see. The work that they've done, money that they've raised, anything along those lines. Correct. Okay. The Going back to your trustees, they have talked about travel. So let's speak about that. When sure. you're traveling, sure. when you're traveling, are you traveling on behalf of the city of Dalton or Thornton Township? It depends. It depends on what it is. So if I'm going to recon, recon is a big, platform for economic development where people go from all over. It's the largest in the nation and everybody go to basically promote their plot of land. So we're going to bring a Starbucks to town. You want to bring, for instance, Maswell well, a trauma center. Mm -hmm. So things like that is what we go for. And then our job is to bring those things back on a plan. It might not happen this year. It might happen a two years out plan. And that's what people don't understand. They think it should happen right now. You went to this conference. What did you do? Right now, you could be working on a deal and come the next term, the next mayor or the next trustee or whoever will benefit from it. Who told her to say that? Who, who told her to explain it that way? So in her mind, she can go first class, Vegas, eat, you know, really good restaurants, go to New York, hang out, go to Bubba Gump Trim, get the, get the hat and say, listen, we out here making deals. And yeah, this, the deals may not materialize right now. It may not materialize until the next term. By that time, you took all that money and for what? So we are in a deficit, but it's not what everybody's claiming it to be. They're going around with false allegations of five million, seven million, eight million. It's all false. Our deficit is two million dollars. Two million dollars. Two million dollars. So she's saying it's it's no way. I mean, eventually the truth should come out about the the, the debt. Just by the, her the overtime for the police officers, it don't seem like to me it's only two million dollars. But I'm not there. I don't have all the financial records. But some tells me it's a little bit more than what she's laying on it. Especially she already is a parent. She already lied earlier about the, or later on, she'll be lying about the charity. So when it comes to the budget, just the budget. Right. Yes. Right. So in terms of who's deciding to pay the bill, so this deficit that you have, you're saying that's a result of the trustees not paying the city's bills? Correct. But, but do you have the resources? Yes. To pay, to pay the bills? Yes. So how's your deficit? because they won't pay the bills. So it's still on our books. Until we release the check and pay the bill, we still count it as a... Well, the problem is with that is she's not being transparent. So they don't know what's going on. You've, you, you locked them out, literally locking them out of the information. They want to know what's going on. Why they will continue to give you money when they don't know what's happening? That's the back and forth. That's where we are. Let's take a break on her voice for a second. I like to bring in Nikita. She, I know she's ready to say what she has to say here. So before we jump in, let everyone know who you are. Well, I am Dr. Nikita Nietzsche Cloud. I am the former chief of staff to Mayor Henyard, and uh, I am a public relations professional. So I do have to tip my hat to the Whitley Agency who handled this PR for Tiffany. Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, from 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 the beginning. I thought I, I thought he was going to do where Roland about, Martin, like he always do. Yeah, I thought he's going to set up, you know, kind of a setup. Hey, who you are and what your responsibilities are and how much you get. And then I thought some more aggressive questioning would, and it's never happened. Yeah, so just from knowing Tiffany, right? One of the things I can almost guarantee you is the only way she took that interview is if there was approved questioning. So usually what she do is she put out a disclaimer like, hey, I'll do this interview, but I can't say this, or I can't say that, or you can't ask me this. So you have to think about it from a person that literally do the same thing you do. So, and I'm not saying it's right. I'm not even saying it's ethical, but if you look at it like that, Nobody has interviewed Tiffany. The only other person who has interviewed Tiffany was Ben Bradley, which was, you know, media gold. Let's just be honest. She now, did not look good. <laughs> she did not look good at all. Now, Roland Martin is the only person. So it takes a person like myself, right? Or for her, in her case, her publicist, who already have the relationship with Roland Martin, right? And they'll yeah. say, hey, listen, I want you to interview her. I'll give you this exclusive. She's hot right now. 
right? Very, She's yeah. real estate when it comes to this. So it's like, well, but you can't ask her about this. If you notice, like I didn't, I, I kind of look past what he said or what he mm. didn't say. I looked at what he didn't ask. And none of those questions highlighted her misappropriation of funds. He did yep. not deep dive into her salary. I mean, the salary part. So like she blatantly lied about the salary. For example, I know she mentioned like 224000 and 50000 at Okay, so what she said was she's part-time. That's a lie. Let's start there. But then yeah. she mentioned that, and I'm going to clarify that in a second because I know some people are going to say, no, she's part-time, but I'll clarify that. First yeah. thing she said was she get $224,000 as Thornton Township's supervisor. Is that right? That's a yes and no, because where she left out was she get a stipend, she get expense accounts, she get those $600 a day per diems. So realistically, she's making well over $300,000 from the mm -hmm. township alone. Now, we, we mosey on over to the village of Dalton. Is she making $50,000 a year? She's actually around 47. Yes. But what she did fail to, miss, to mention is she's also the liquor commissioner, which comes with a different salary. So she's almost knocking at that hundred thousand a year at the village of Dalton as well. So wow. what she did was she did a lot of wordplay, right? And not even good at this wordplay. So I can tell from the beginning of the conversation, she had a set amount of questions that they they prepped her on. But then you notice when she started to get frustrated, she went rogue. Like, for example, I took some notes when she kept lying. And she said that she kept taking shots at like trustee Belcher, right? And, you know, she said a few things about her. She took some other lies, like the charity. Girl, that's your charity. Stop. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, like everyone that's on the charity, you pay at some capacity or you sleep with. Let's just be honest. So yeah. for you to get on there on a national platform. So I'm going to look at the positive. The reality of the matter is just like you was on, I was on. I know for a fact Several major news publications were on because I personally invited them and we were on a chat together talking about it. That being said, yeah. she screwed herself. So if just to say a federal agent that we know are all out here in the village of Dalton, they're watching, that's the what as well. And they watched her lie about the foundation. I mean, so what is the point? If it's not your foundation, you spent, what, $75,000 to take a walk for this foundation that you say is really not yours? Come on now, sis. Did you really utilize Thornton Township resources for this foundation that you say is not yours? I mean, it was full of contradictions. And then with Roland Martin, that was just the lack of journalistic integrity in the entire matter. I don't want to say I'm going to say allegedly because it did come off that perhaps maybe a little bread was buttered. I'm just saying when you see I've seen Roland Martin interviews Go there. Go after people. Back and forth arguments, screaming matches, which is custom to how our political commentary is supposed to be a lot of fireworks, mm -hmm. people going back and forth. It seems the energy was off again. But the flip side, I'm gonna give him a little. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a little credit. Let's mm -hmm. give him a little credit here. He still allowed her to get all of that rope and hang herself <laughs> because, like, it was one part when he asked. He said, "Listen, so you're saying this is not your charity?" She said, "No, it's not, sir." And he played Look at this video. You, you got the T-shirt on. And he was like, OK, I mean, because at the end of the day, you can yeah. utilize this. He has a public platform. We can literally take that and utilize that as proof. She can't take it down like she would do if, let's say, you know, it was a village of Dalton, you know, page, things like that. She can't do that because it's yeah. his page and he's not going to he's not going to remove it because he did numbers, in my opinion, was that sideway disrespect of Jason House, right? Talk about that. That was, so like you said, be nice to her, kid gloves to her, but Jason House, he's interrupting. It was it was such a big difference in how he was mm -hmm. speaking to, what you thought about that? Yeah, he even rolled his sleeves up and did that. Outrageous. Yeah, he did. He didn't get him at the same standard. time. He was quick to kind of just move on and move past it, kind of make it seem like he was doing the fair and balance. Okay, talk to the mayor. Let's talk about the talk to the main trustee that he, he's having some beef with. She's having beef with. And then it just it was just it was cringe to say the least. It was definitely cringe. It was cringe. But I think that Jason, 
held his own. He he maintained his integrity. He handled those questions with poise. He was accurate, although he did not get an opportunity to say everything I, I can assume because I saw how he kept getting cut off, kept getting cut off. And that's honestly when I started thinking that perhaps, you know, a deal was made or even, you know, pre-approved questions because I have seen that happen on several occasions. And just working with Tiffany, it was like, um, I know that, you know, I tried to get her press or I gotten her a, a feature in Essence magazine. I gotten her a feature in Black Enterprise. And she was the exact same way. Like if they didn't ask only these questions, and this is before all of, yeah. you know, the scandal and all of these things, because had I known that she was this individual, I would have by no means gotten her these, you know, this coverage. But I know that she likes pre-approved questions. I know that she fears the media. That being said, I already know that, you know, he had an agreement, right? So mm -hmm. agreement aside, though, yeah. agreement aside, but he has an obligation, right? He has an obligation as a journalist to do the right thing. He has a journalistic obligation to accurately report the news. In my personal opinion, he did not do that. He was very careful. He was very strategic. And to me, it appeared that there were pre-approved questions that he did not want to answer. He wanted to respect her opinion because she was face to face, whereas Jason was online yeah. and he's a man and he went harder with him. Now, also in a perfect world, I get what he was saying. I'm just being fair when he said that, you know, the board has the majority, but where he's missing out on the board surely has the majority, mm -hmm. but she has the, the directors, you know, she has the staff, she has all of this. So if she's strong arming these people, and I know for a fact that she is, I know for a fact she tell the directors, the employees, if they comply, they're fired. I know for a fact she does this. So he doesn't know that nor did he take the time to do the research because all you have to do is put in on Google, Tiffany Henry's name and click on news. All of your facts are there. Or I shouldn't have had to call you to invite Jason House on the show. You get what I'm saying to them to say, hey, I got the mayor on the show. Let's get Jason House on because you got to keep it fair. You got to keep it balanced. When I was on Anton, I encourage Anton Daniel, shout out. I encouraged him to reach out to Henyard and say, get her on the show. Fact check. If I'm lying, go ahead, come back behind me, drop your receipts, or better yet, let's get us on a show together. I would love to go toe to toe with Tiffany Henyard. Yeah. But she probably would not want to do that. Like you said, she wants maximum control mm -hmm. over everything that's going on. So, yeah, I just felt like with Roland, he just, it looked like it was just, he was just being naive. He's he, being he, nice. I don't know what's going on. And I'm just trying to get all sides here. And what do you mean you guys can't work this out? Have you talked to the, you know, the, the senator or whatever? You talk to higher ups to kind of, let's just stop this nonsense. Oh, don't you, like you said, have the majority. Uh, other staff reports, like like you said, how said it? All staff reports are directly going to the mayor's office. There's been instances where employees have been faced disciplinary mm -hmm. actions, exter uh, termination. They can pay more than they've ever been paid before. And that's what it is. You said it right there. You got to look at it like this, right? You, okay, example. And I am so sorry. I'm just going to put people out there. And I did not do that before. You got to look at who is in her circle. If anybody, okay, first of all, Keith Freeman, right? For yeah. example, Keith Freeman. I mean, this is allegedly, but we know that it's public information. He has financial issues. So if you're dangling a few hundred thousand dollars around him, he said it even in a video, some some church or religious video he did himself that he and his wife was dealing with some financial troubles or Correct. something yeah. like that. These are all his words. No one is mincing his words. So I know that when he was at other municipalities, that actual position where he's the village administrator at a hundred thousand a year, he was not making that right he was making half of that because other municipalities were not paying that right so now you get a hundred thousand a year and then she becomes supervisor three months later she hits you with another 65 70 grand a year so now you know he's at almost 200k so he's living comfortable he could probably pay a bill or two 
or buy a car, get it repoed or whatever, you know, hey, I mean, yeah. but, but you know what I'm saying? And then you have, let's just say a, what do you call that guy? The deputy chief of police. I mean, yeah. he has a background a mile long. Yeah. Right. So now he has what's what, you know, like, OK, so now he's getting his promotions in any reasonable town. No reasonable, you know, municipality would promote someone with such a background. Now, let me yes, go. History, yes, history is pretty, pretty mm -hmm. spotty, to say the least. And, yeah. And he's never done anything to me personally. Right. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying just, you know, he he's given shady. He's giving, you know, a little bit. Of, I'll do whatever it takes to keep my job. You know, I saw some videos where he was harassing a woman during a traffic stop. I you saw the same video. Okay. So exactly. yeah, you got that, right? I'm trying to think of who else. Her, her her assistant. And then she hired her as the trustee at the township. She's also her landlord. I don't know if you guys know that. Wow. So it's kind of hard to combat the, combat the person who literally gives you your roof. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, you have that. And it's a few others. So what she usually do is she prays on the, I don't mean it's disrespectfully, but she prays on the weak. Yeah. So money is money and, and money can, I mean, th that's the whole point of corruption, mm -hmm. right? Money is extremely powerful resource that you can use to control people, manipulate people. Yeah. And if you never made that kind of money before, you don't, you know, you will, some of us, hopefully not most of us, but they will, you will do some, some shady stuff. And I think with her, it's obvious but again, it's obvious to everyone, but Roland. Roland has not been on YouTube checking. He did not type in Tiffany Hager's name at all. He couldn't have. He, couldn't he didn't. Have. And, you know, so, I mean, you got to look at it like this, too. You know, it's, you know, if, you, if you're a good publicist, you have relationships with journalists. And that's just the reality of the matter. So if you ask, you know, that, hey, can you do my girl a solid? Can you get her on the show? That's the girl that's been in the news. You know, she's all over. You're going to definitely get the hits. He like, yeah, let's get her on today. He probably, you know, whoever he probably had on there originally, because if you notice, he didn't promote her before today. So right. he probably had someone else. They fell off. Someone knows somebody. He did a solid. He got on the show, didn't get a chance to vet. But things I know about Ron Roland Martin, he's not done. He's going to answer to this because once the, you know, like he see your video or he see, you know, Sean Burns or, you know, Anton and then or even the news. When he starts seeing that, he doesn't like that pressure. Right. Because he's been in this game a long time and he's even been under pressure before. He's yeah. definitely going to answer. So I don't think that that was it. I don't think we've heard the last of that when it comes to him. So, you know, I don't really. I think that he is going to answer. I did send him. So he is in receipt of some videos. I did send him some, you know, some fact checks. Since him. So let's just see what happens there. What was the other thing? You know, the, the going back and forth about the salary with her lying there. Like she, all she did, as she say her haters, yeah. all she did was give her haters more content. In her words, you know, that's the way yeah. I see it. So I don't look at the, the interview with Roland Martin as, quote unquote, um, for to the residents I'm speaking to. I don't look at yeah. that as a loss whatsoever. I think that she will probably think it was a slam dunk. That's just, you know, the narcissistic behavior that yeah. she has. However, I do not look at it as a loss as it relates to the residents of Dalton getting justice. I yeah. just don't see it as that at all whatsoever. I see it as what she did was she further gave the yeah. residents of Dalton, the authorities or whoever else that, you know, need this information. I really think that she just gave it to them on a on a platter. And yeah. I'm happy. I, I think it was a slam dunk. I think Jason House did very well. I'm happy he did not lose his school because I probably would have snapped. But again, that's why I'm not an elected official. And I get Me neither, right? I can it's, say it's a, and that's what you need. With it. <laughs> you need that. As a politician, you need a lot of mm -hmm. patience dealing with all types of things. But yeah, so before we head out for a second, at least, at least yeah. in terms of talking about uh, the legal battles. So she says she won 24 cases. But, you know, like even House said, there's there's still... It's not even still, 24 cases. There isn't 24 <laughs> cases. There's still five lawsuits that are still either it's still it's still pending like there's still stuff like what is the lines where's it get yeah let me explain that so yeah. what happens is let's say for example you are suing tiffany because she came and 
cut all the wires to your home, right? And well, she cut off the street lights that on your on your block. Let me just give that example. So she cut off the street lights and you get robbed and you blame her, right? And you say, I'm gonna sue you. So I go to court because the lights are still off on the block. So you go in and say, I need a sooner court date. So you file an emergency motion to get the court date seen before the judge within three to five days, right? Yeah. And then you go to court within three to five days, and then the judge say, Well, I don't really see this as an emergency. So your temporary restraining order to stop her from turning the lights off on my block has been denied, but we will see your case on the regular scheduled court date, right? She's taking that, well, he said that he can't see our case now as a win. And that's Absolutely. not a win. That's what he's saying is when he deny, he's denying the TRO, which is a temporary restraining order versus the case itself. All the cases are still ongoing. Nothing has been quote unquote, with maybe the exception of um, what the recall. And I think the bank account information, which is still in, in my opinion, is kind of ongoing as well. Don't yeah. quote me on that, but she's never really won a case. Now we know what happened with the recall. That was a technicality. Yeah. So, I mean, it Other is than really that, good. 24 yeah. and 0 does not make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But another thing I want to point out that she mentioned that about, and I, I have this written down too. She said that that salary thing, you know, where the salary goes down to $40,000. Yeah, I remember. Was, yeah. I mean, no, what, what was it? Is it 40? No, 25,000. She stated that that was already put in place. No, that's not true as well. There was something where the setup. So basically, for example, Frank Zuccarelli, the previous supervisor who sadly passed away year before last, he had been in that position for 35 years. So quite naturally, his salary justified his 35-year tenure. Yeah. Now, inflation, just uh, inflation expenses, and stuff things like of that, that yeah. sort. However, there was an ordinance that if he, he retire or whatever, it starts at another, it goes back to a different tier. I can't remember what that tier was, but it definitely wasn't 25,000. Tiffany went and changed the ordinance. And I know she says she did not. She tried to make it seem like it was already there. And that was not the case. She changed it to be 25,000, not because of what was her excuse that the people felt that she was making too much. If that was the case, she would have just took 25,000 herself. The salary stays the same if she win the seat. The salary only change if she, you know, the salary only changed if she loses. If she what loses, she yeah. Do was discourage people for running against for that seat, but she didn't say that. He didn't question that. So that's why I'm a little disappointed. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. he had that opportunity to ask those questions, and he did not. So that's where he, you know, he kind of dropped that ball there. Like it was a lot of opportunities that he could have probed. And he didn't. Yeah, there's a lot. But like you said, and I, 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 you know, I feel a little better talking to you about that in terms of, yeah, let everyone hear what she had to say mm -hmm. and what's not been said mm -hmm. that you can kind of make your own conclusions throughout the amount of evidence and people here yeah. talking about this. That there's not is not we're not in a bizarre world. Yeah, he slipped up. He like you said, I think he probably may go a little more aggressive talking about the situation after he realizes all of the mistakes that have been done. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, yeah, I think that point of just put put it out there. Put what she say out there because a lot of people are are watching. It was about mm -hmm. 2,000 people checking out. So there's enough people to see what she's saying is right or wrong. Do you have a uh, we'll touch on the collective bargaining agreement regarding the mayor's security detail? So how said it's it's allows for reasonable security, but it does not support exactly. the excessive overtime costs that have been incurred, especially if there's a, a budget issue, a significant budget strain. Like mm -hmm. what were you thinking? Like, I, I guess I don't, I don't have the collective bar agreement. Well, well here's things, the deal. Let weird. me break that down for you, bro. So sure. here's the deal. So think about it in Illinois, we have, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down in a way that I'm going to break it down in a way that, you know, with a law that's in Illinois. So we have, we're concealed and carry state, right? So, you know, we have the right with a license to carry a weapon. Now, when it comes to us using that weapon, we have to say we reasonably 
we have to reasonably believe our life is in danger, right? Mm -hmm. So what does reasonably look like? Reasonably look like what? You are in my home. You are attacking me. I can reasonably protect myself. The ordinance states that only officers are allowed to work a security detail for elected officials, right? So officers are allowed to work a security detail for elected officials, right? So let's say this elected, she has the security detail walking her around, going to house to house. She has the security detail going to pick up her babies. She's a president. It doesn't say anything about a mayor being entitled to, because if that's the case, Jason can have security. Kiana can have security. Tammy can have security. In fact, I'm petty enough. If I were them, I'll go get it just to see. I mean, this is it says elected officials, right? Not the mayor. So that means if we're reasonably, you get what I'm saying? They right, right, right. Can have detail. So when she play on those words, that reasonably word, come on now, sis. So I don't think she even know what the law is. If I'm being honest with you. So that being said reasonable. She have a major event or, you know, something like that is happening in town, terrorist attack, whatever. Right. Reasonable. Not picking up your baby from school, going to do your laundry, going right in a God. Tiffany, myself and her detail one time went to a burger shop in Chicago for lunch. After that burger shop, it was around her daughter's birthday. So if anybody want to fact check this, we went to Chicago Ridge Mall on 95th to go shopping for her daughter's birthday party stuff. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. What is reasonable about that? And I'll never forget that day because I felt like I was kidnapped because I'm out here running around with a kid for a kid. I don't even know. Right. So reasonable security is not for certainly not for out of state, certainly not for any of that. So what are we doing here, sis? He didn't question that. No, like he didn't have the information. What I need people to understand is that I love other people out there who ain't never reported on nothing. No, man, you should have did it this way. First, you have to ask a series of questions to get answers. And now you come back with, okay, there are contradictions in the answer. Mr. Roland Martin, he wasn't too happy with the response and some of the criticism that many YouTubers had. Listen, Roland Martin was destroyed, just eviscerated by many, many YouTubers about how he conducted that interview with our super mayor. Just destroyed. Hey, you didn't have any kind of research. You were very nice to her. And I say nice, but you held over kid gloves. You, you had no follow-up for many of the questions that she had maybe the charity one, but you were more aggressive to Jason House. And I hope that, you know, one day that you do apologize to Jason House because you talked to him like he was the problem when the problem was right next to you and you dropped that moment. Like that, as many people already said, he will never get that moment ever, ever again. He basically said the thing that we already were talking about the moment he was finished about just fact checking some of the things shout out to uh nikita a uh, doctor nikita fantastic guest she broke everything down to a point we had to we didn't have to watch any more of the interview which was amazing because she broke everything down from the salary that she wasn't honest with the police detail she wasn't honest with and obviously with the charity that she wasn't honest with and how roland just dropped the ball on all those things now he's trying to do catch up he's trying to get back into that sort of secret squirrel meeting I don't know if he's be accepted. I think I, I posted a link like, hey, do you think he should come back? You know, he's he did, he did a fact check and I thought a lot of people were like, no, screw him. Let me show you what he said. Last night on Roland Martin Unfiltered, I talked to the mayor of Dalton, Illinois, an exclusive interview. Let me know if that's too much. A lot of allegations out, against actually. her. She's got national attention. A lot of critics out there with regards to how she's operated as the mayor of Dalton, as well as the supervisor of Thornton Township. One of the issues we talked about was this charity, uh, Tiffany Henrik Cares Foundation. Here's what I first asked her about the foundation. You have a charity that, uh, from the Attorney General's office, as uh, I understand they sent a cease and desist letter to your foundation. I don't know nothing about that. I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm not You have a, a Tiffany Henrik Cares, your foundation. I, so the- Why does she answer that way? 
I'm not crazy. I'm not deranged. That was a weird, like she, she was already telling on herself. Like she already had guilt instead, instead of just saying, you know, cause she's lying, whatever, right? Instead of just saying, no, that's not my charity. She was like, I'm not crazy. I'm not deranged. I, thought, I, I listened to that again. I'm like, that was an odd way of answering that question. The attorney general's office hasn't reached out to you regarding your, founda your foundation. So I want to set the record straight. I don't have a family. I am a supporter of anybody that's struggling with cancer. My mom had breast cancer, and I'm always push anybody that has that. If someone uses my name to push their charity, or if you say this is Tiffany T-shirt, people gonna buy. Because right now, consider what clickbait. People make money off of my name by views. So you just so take my you name. don't have a you say you say you don't have a I foundation. I don't. I do not. And that's okay. why I tell everybody go do your research. I'm not on anything. Okay. Now, again, the main theory is he was he was probably paid or there was an agreement. I understand that. But the idea that the man did not type her name into any kind of search engine, all the information was already available from the news news websites like the or the pages like Fox 32 Chicago talked about all of the things that he had questions. So he had the questions. And he, he, if he would have like took that question and put it into like Google search or YouTube search, it would have popped up reputable news sources because he also said he said this guys let me let's post this real quick he said this about all of us who question him about his interview style his journalistic integrity he he was like listen guys you guys are idiots play real quick understand is that i love all the people out there who ain't never reported on nothing no man you should have did it this way first you have to ask a series of questions to get answers and now you come back with Okay, there are contradictions in the answer. Yeah, yeah dude, like we we understand that. I know you, you know you're the, you're the journalist. We are just a bunch of nobodies. Cool, whatever. I'm a nobody. I don't have a problem with that. We have a question for you. What happened? What the hell happened to you during an in interview, or at least before the interview, when you had the ability to look up the questions? Because of course you should have questions, but you should have follow up to those questions prepared questions of, hey, if this person says this, I can hit them with that. You didn't do any of that. You let her say ridiculous things and you just moved on. But Jason House, he said you had a little bit more heat for him. And the reason why also I put this uh, screen grab, what, one thing about Roland I did not notice on his YouTube channel, he is very aggressive to the people in the chat. You know, the people that support him and watch his, his content, even if they don't agree with him. You know, because everyone who watches help him in some way monetarily. And you see right there, for all you dumbasses who question how I did the interview, now you fools know why I did this. So his stance is, this was all a play. I'm playing chess. She's on checkers. All the rest of you watching this on checkers. All the people who criticize me are, are playing checkers. I'm chess. I'm doing 4D chess over here. You idiots didn't realize how brilliant I set this all up on purpose. And we're supposed to believe that. We're supposed to believe that that's what actually happened. Some tells me that's not how it, it happened. He came unprepared because he thought he was talking to someone that he agrees with because again, homegirl is a Democrat does not mean I should treat her any differently than how he talks to conservatives where he's very aggressive. He has all the research. He has all his ducks in a row when he wants to go after conservatives, but one of the most corrupt mayors in a very long time. And I'm sure there's our other corrupt mayors, and we're gonna be going after all of them as well. But such a corrupt person sitting right next to him, he, he didn't have that aggression, didn't have the research. But we're just a bunch of dumbasses. This is all a setup. Rolling, you messed up, and you're trying to fix the situation. And, and come on, you know, you know what would have been a better move for him, right? Like, you know what, guys, I messed up. I should have had more prepared when she came into the studio. You guys are correct. I should have did more. There's a lot of things she said on record that were completely wrong. Not, I have questions. What question are we talking about? She's lied to you, dummy. We have questions. How it took you so long to realize this? That's the question we have. What, what happened? But fine, you try to correct this situation. But I love the fact in the comments, let's, let's, go, let's go back to the main video. I'll blow it up a little bit. The comments from the video, and they are not uh, positive for Mr. Roland. Right here, the, the most popular one. It's not hard to understand. She uses this charity as money laundering scheme. She's crooked as a day is long and needs to be in prison. Joe and Mass. This was the most pathetic and unprofessional and unprepared interview I have ever seen. Roland never followed up to repute the obvious lies that that corrupt politician was spewing. Uh, Dude Santos. Now he's acting tough to an empty chair. Uh, another one. Hee haw. Confronting her with real facts would have been great to see. You dropped the ball. 
Shame. On Dolan, you owe apologies to those you chastise in this female criminal's defense. And another one here. Hey, Roland, she played you, sir. And there's no way she's coming back. She used you for a purpose and got you. So yeah, in the video, he talks about, I have questions. I'm, I invite them back on the show. They're not coming back on the show. You, like, what are you talking about? Why would she come back? You had her there. In fact, I don't think she's going to have another interview. I'm, I'm going to bet this right now. I think she does not go on any more interviews. Anytime someone is going to try to talk to her, even if it's like an ambush type situation, you know, like, you know, Fox 32 comes with a, with a mic and asks questions. She's going to say, talk to my lawyer. She's going to say, talk to my lawyer. I, I'm not going to talk to you. It's over. And some of the people that are on Roland's side, I guess fans are like, oh, look at, look at Uncle Ro. Look how he did it. He, he set this whole thing up. The, the better setup would have been that he was prepared and had those follow-up questions to see what she would say. Not, you received the information as if you already had it. You didn't. I know you didn't. And then all of a sudden, you know, try to be the tough guy. I hope that he does apologize to Jason House. He deserves an apology. You did not respect him. You didn't treat him right. And... Also, if you guys watched the last video from Nate, the lawyer, he announced that he will be interviewing uh, Jason House. And I can't wait for that to happen because I know Nate, the lawyer will treat Jason House with respect and ask questions and let him talk and not interrupt him. Unlike the Mr. Professional here, because again, we just, we never investigated anything. We're just a bunch of nobodies. He's the professional. And, and again, instead of saying, you know what? I screwed up. I'm sorry. It's the double down on the ignorance and double down on him being lazy and unprepared. So we'll, 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 we'll see, uh, we'll see, but he got played. Yeah, I agree. He got played. What else can we really surmise? Like what, what else can we say? And again, being nasty to people that's on your chat and you're cursing them out and you're calling them dumb. And I, I've been back and forth with commenters about certain things, but that never really works. You should either you have to ignore it. Or if you answer, if they're actually providing some kind of criticism, but to go back and forth and be aggressive, you know, be honest, this is another thing I've noticed too, about some of the people who've been on mainstream TV, right? They've been on CNN, they've been on MSNBC or Fox news or C-SPAN. They've been on network TV. They come to YouTube and they believe that they're better than the, you know, the dopey YouTuber that's, you know, doing this from home. You know, they are the professionals. They went, they went to the journalistic schools, they have the degrees and they believe that they're above everyone else. Right. Even though at this point, at least from my, my perspective, that uh, many of the YouTubers that do independent journalism are way more tr trustworthy. And they, even if they are conservative or, or liberal, at least, you know, what, what it is, and they're doing it at a better pace and a better clip than the rest of these guys are. So it, I think that's what it is. I don't know if Roland checks out other YouTubers. I don't think so. He has this network. He does his thing. I don't think he checks anything. I'm sure he saw in the comments and maybe he did a YouTube search yesterday and saw all the videos destroying him. Just, just going after him. And I was more going after the Hanyard about how she just blatantly lied, but they were like, Roland, you really messed up. You know the thing too, that's really uh, disappointing. He could have really been like the guy that, that, you know, again, he's the more recognizable face. He could have took this seriously, talked to people that are in Dalton who are trying to get as much attention to this situation as possible. And he could be that guy. He could go to, to Dalton. They'll treat him probably with more respect because he's at least a recognizable face. They're not, I don't think they're going to be able to, well, maybe, I don't know, the way the Dalton police are, but he can go in there and maybe open some doors that us YouTubers can't open or some even the citizens of Dalton can't open, that he can open some doors and try to get to the bottom of this. And he just did read it felt, you know, fell flat on his face. Gilly May says, I think some YouTubers are way more trustworthy and knowledgeable than the network worms. Yeah. I, I think, you know, they, they're working for a company, those corporations. Now he said you, Google is a corporation. YouTube has their uh, restrictions and things that they push. Uh, I do believe that there's certain shadow bands of certain co topics that are, don't get pushed in the algorithm. But at the same time, I think anyone with a cell phone can create something that millions of people can watch. You can reach millions of people with just your cell phone. And that bothers some of the network guys. I think it, it bothers the person that spent all that money on their, their degree. And then, you know, they'd be working at these uh, news stations. They're in the studio, you know, the cameras are like $50,000, all this, the makeup, all this stuff. And a person, you know, looking at a camera with a mic can reach as much, as much people as they could, right? So Roland Martin has a 1.5 or 1.2 something million subscribers, right? But Nate, the lawyer 
has a more has a better reach and a farther reach than Heat does, right? So like that's the thing that they they fight against. And this goes to network news, sports news. They think, well, we learn this to do this professional, and some YouTuber can't come in and expose. Well, I think so far a lot of the YouTubers is the reason why this story is pushing as as far as it did, and is pushing even more. I think he got paid. It was so bad it looked like he got paid. Either you you got paid or you lazy. You you either got paid or you lazy or you have, you have a blind allegiance to your party. All bad. Like all those all those t options are not good. If you're trying to be what you call a, you know ethical journalist, all of them are bad. There's a foundation that's not registered, but it has nothing to do with you. Correct. That's true. Okay. That's so true. you're not aware of any of the work that they've done, money that they've raised, anything along those lines. Correct. I want to say thank you guys for having us today and letting us um, speak before you. Um, I want to say good afternoon and thank you to Chairman uh, Zadalinski. Did I get it right? <laughs> and Vice Chair uh, Tyvert and Republican spokesperson um, Red. Right. Is right. Right. And the committee members. I want to thank you for just um, listening to us. Uh, before I begin my uh, one page speech, I want to let you guys know that we did just come back from an 11 day hike to Springfield. We started in Dalton and we walked and we rode bikes all the way to Springfield just to create this bill um, that you see before you. Um, I'm asking for your support. Meanwhile, WGN Investigates has learned nearly all of the money a South Suburban politician's cancer charity claims to have received in its first few months of activity came from taxpayers. The Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation was created in the fall of 2022 and heavily promoted by Henyard. The township board she oversees gave the foundation $10,000 days after its creation. A new filing with the Illinois Attorney General says the foundation only raised 3,000 additional dollars. Thousands more dollars were charged to township credit cards during the charity's walk to Springfield. The Attorney General has ordered the foundation to stop soliciting money because it still hasn't submitted tax filings to show how it spent money. Get down to it again here. So the mayor of Dalton, I put a post up saying that re in reality, man, I could never ever understand how black folks in particular we want to push another, push a black woman where they want the FBI to investigate her. The black people are doing this now. I don't know who's behind everything. I'm not saying Tiffany is perfect. Hear me clearly. Uh, Tiffany may not be perfect, but I just do, do not believe that she has broken any laws of the land, right? She's been accused of stealing money. She hasn't been in office long enough, in my opinion, to steal no millions of dollars, right? She's been accused of all kinds of wrongdoing. And remember the word allegations and accused, right? Opposed to anything she's done. So that's the reason I'm speaking up for her for right now, because I don't think it's right to put a witch hunt out on the young lady. She may have gotten a little big headed here or there because she's a woman in power. And usually when people. Uh that was weird. She had a big head because she's a woman. Anyone hear that? That was weird. Let me repeat that. Let me, let me uh, rewind that real quick. Big headed here or there because she's a woman in power. And usually. Why? So when a, when a woman gets power, she can get big headed and misspent stereotypes of black people is wrong. Then stereotyping women power is wrong too. Like, again, let me know if that was kind of weird the way he said that. When people get in power initially, sometimes people may make some decisions a lot of people do not understand, right? Because when people get money sometimes, we change. We change. Some people change for a moment, then they have to get used to getting the money, then they come back down and come back around to everybody. So those things happen in the world. Okay. So while we have such low expectations of ourselves, let's just say that Tiffany Hayard is not a really nasty person that's vindictive and nasty. Like we, we remove all that. You elected her to be a mayor, elected him to be a mayor, and they just start spending like crazy. And they're a super nice person. They're super sweet. And they're spending money recklessly and making tons of bad decisions. That person needs to be fired, like needs to be let go, needs to be recalled. So even if it's not malicious, it's incompetent. You, we can't have incompetent leadership. We can't have incompetent mayor or any kind of public official. So to apologize and defend someone when they are making bad decisions doesn't make any sense. I don't understand what his rationale is. He's trying to apologize for the behavior. How about, no, we just we hold everyone accountable. But the problem is that she is committed or at least alleged to commit crimes across state lines. That's when the feds come in. That's how it works. The feds come in when you are traveling all over the place. So we're going, we're going to talk about that. Give him some more information about at least some of the things we can explain 
on why so many people have problems with her. Get back into the foundation. Why, why are there so much issues with the foundation? Well, the first thing, it's, it seems like it's a lot of misuse in public resources, public employees and resources for personal or foundational related activities, especially when it's funded by taxpayers is unethical and illegal. $10,000 coming from a township going into a, a, her cares foundation. This is a charity that shouldn't be there. I have no idea what's going on. Remember she told that to Roland. She told that to Andrew Lee. I'm just a face or I don't know. People just put things in my name and I just run with it. Like none of that made any sense. And we can, we can back that up with a lot of information. This poorly worded message saying, I, you know, I will be testifying before the revenue committee, a, a bill I created. She can't sign a bill. So she doesn't know what she's talking about. She changed. She has a you know, good burger business. She changed the name of the Facebook to go to Tiffany Harris foundation. She had an interview with Roland and she lied to his face. So I don't know if you care about that or whatever, but a lot of said, I didn't have nothing to do with it. She does have something to do with it. So let's listen to her at testifying from this committee talking about this, the foundation. In September of this year, I founded the Tiffany Henry Cares Foundation, a non-for-profit organization whose mission is to find meaningful relief for people dealing with all types of cancer. Our goal is to provide resources and services for cancer patients as they fight for their lives. Whether it's wigs, prosthetics, or treatments, reduction of prescription drugs for options, support groups, or utility and rental assistance. That is our focus. The Council's Foundation supports the fighter in everyone. The legislation supports our efforts. I am here before you as a representative of the people of Dalton, Thornton Township, in the state of Illinois. But the problem is, and the biggest issue that we have with the foundation is a lot of the spending that happened with that march to Springfield. She talked about going to Springfield. Let me show you the file there. So this was the 2022 annual cancel walk. She's selling shirts for $25, hoodies for 50. And there's something else I want to show you real quick that you see in this photo here. Pay attention to this address right here, because we'll be talking about that in a little bit. But you see right here, now this is a foundation charity. So it has nothing to do necessarily with the village. This is her own thing. But the problem is she used a lot of that money from the village funds, the sweaters, the t-shirts, whatever. She spends 17,000, 200 and what's that? $280. That's a lot of money for some damn shirts and some, some hoodies. That's a lot of money. Don't you think so? That's $17,000 of the taxpayer money to do this. You know, what, what, what's, what's the excuse for that? And then she sold them, right? The problem is what, what happened to that money? Let's zoom in a little bit more there. What happened to the money? This is not paid by her. This, this is paid by, by taxpayer money. She sold those sweaters and, and someone had a really good comment about this. If she did something positive with the foundation, right? gave people wigs, did, where's the video? Cause you know, she loves showing videos about all the positive things she done. She has not said anything about it. Is there any person saying, wow, I, I benefited from this. They gave me something, they gave me support. So she sold a bunch of, and actually they have a video, hopefully this video works of her basically selling merch, selling this merch. Phil, here we come. And remember, anybody wants to donate, go to thcares.org and you can donate by sweater, t-shirt, hoodie, and our cancer walk. Okay, where's that money went? Who knows? Definitely ain't going, ain't going to help anybody out, or at least what I have seen. I haven't seen anything. Claiming to sign a bill when you don't have the authority to do so is like misleading or you're just dumb. I don't know. It's definitely unethical. Because when you say certain things, are you trying to deceive other donors? Donors that really thought that you were talking about something that made sense? I should pay for it. And when she sells shirts, made checks payable to Tiffany Hayes Cares Foundation. Yeah, so she took that money and I guess she just probably pocketed. Like, wh wh where is any evidence of her helping someone with cancer? Anyone? Like, a anyone? Any idea? I mean, you guys let me know. I, I don't know. I, I told you guys about to look at that address, right? 14, 14, on Dr. Martin Luther King Drive. The reason why I brought that up, at least actually we'll show you one more thing. Remember if you guys looked up the 
the foundation you saw that you, it was, I think at one point Keith Freeman was on the paperwork, helping out the, the foundation or whatever his name, his name was supposed to be here that the agent Remember, it was Keith Freeman. So there's Tiffany Hanyers cares foundation, this guy, Victor right here. Now all of a sudden he's a, he's the agent. And that's very interesting. Cause it's like, yo, who's Victor? Like who, who is this person that now is no longer Keith Freeman, but it's, it's this guy. And I'm, I'm thinking too, like, yeah, this is kind of interesting. So the reason why I brought this up is there's, there's some connections here, Victor and other people involved. So let me show you some of the other businesses that he is, that this guy, Victor is an agent for. So right here, and this is all you can, you can look, you guys can look this up. I'll put the links to these websites. It's all public information, but you look at this website right here and he is an agent for rock island clothing and rock island bistro and rock island transporting incorporated and like okay that's interesting who owns those businesses that he is an agent for when you look that up you find out that kamal woods is the president he run he ran these businesses so if you guys may not know who kamal woods is he is Allegedly, at this point, everyone in Dalton apparently knows this, the boyfriend of Tiffany A. Hayard, and apparently he's married, and he's not married to Tiffany Hayard. That's what the word on the street says. And also, you'd be like, well, who's, why are you getting talking about Kamal Woods? Like, what other connections he has here, right? Well, the problem is he has a job in, in the township as a youth director. This here, he's getting paid $100,000 to be a manager of the youth grant, doing pretty well for himself. Conflict of interest is probably the first thing coming in my head. The agent for the, the, the cares foundation shares the same agent as her boyfriend that's married's company. All this sounds really legit, right? This sounds like a legit foundation that helped people with cancer. Don't sound like it's a weird pay for play, some kind of scam going on. Not at all. And I'm being sarcastic when I say that, but Kamal Woods is heavily involved in a lot of this shady behavior. So that's why I'm saying there's a lot of connections here. Yeah, this this individual Kamal Woods, this guy right here, uh, RockIslandClothing.com, and there's a lot more that we're gonna get into. Maybe not necessarily in this live stream, but a lot to get into with the properties that's being sold, being brought. Their names on everything. See, the thing too about is she just evil or just incompetent? So these these people are they're committing some crimes here. There's some fraud going on, and everything is searchable with the internet prior history of companies, changing names of companies, buying companies, all this stuff is on the internet. And I don't know if they just didn't know where the internet exists or something, but a lot of questionable charity operations. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's probably the best way I can put it. False advertising. You promoting activities and accomplishments, have they even occurred? Are they exaggerated? That's unethical. So let's go back to the, the address that I, I showed earlier, the address I showed right here. So what was that 4121 Dr. Martin Luther King Drive? That's where the Tiffany A. Hanyers Cares Foundation, right? That's where it's located. Now, if you go to the, I think thcares.org, go there now. There, you can't go there. Like the, the, that website is down, which is interesting for the foundation why the website is down. But I, I looked, and anyone could check. So the reason why I brought this up is she did something really weird. She shelled out about $30,000 in rent that came from her campaign it, to fund the foundation. So let me show you that again, all this is, you can look this up. You can look this up, you guys yourselves. So this, this is friends of Tiffany Hayard is a campaign fund. She paid $10,000 and $20,000 to this company here, recipient name Renamat properties, right? So like, what is Renamat properties? What, what do they own? Well, if you just, uh, again, just go on the internet, you'll see the address that I just posted 14, 121 Chicago street, but same address with the same property opening, random at properties. She's taking money from campaigns to fund foundations using campaign funds for purposes, not related to the electoral campaigns or holding office is at the least, po least point legally problematic, right? Depends on the laws and what's going on, but campaigns are supposed to be meant to support campaign activities, electoral operations, that type of thing. The duties related to holding office not paying rent for your foundation. Not good. Not good at all. We can go more into some of the bills and how they spend the money using the village of Dalton to take that trip to Springfield. So according to credit card reports, that trip to Springfield cost the taxpayers about a hundred thousand dollars. Let me repeat that trip to Springfield costs roughly a hundred 
thousand dollars pay by the taxpayers it says pay by the village of dalton to things that had nothing to do with the people in dalton this one credit card receipt here now you can see, now i'll i'll blow this up so in case you guys can't see it but kansas city keith freeman village of dalton he's spending about four grand here and what he's doing so keith freeman village of Dalton, kansas city but 4600 bucks right there so they're just spending all the money totally totally legit not terrible at all right not 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 a problem that's what they're doing with the taxpayers money so let me show that again it's kansas city paying just running running up running up the the, the credit cards let's see some more invoices here so like right here crown plaza spend about another what was that 2700 dollars village of dalton the village of dalton here you know this is this this is not this shouldn't be here right let's just throw, just throw it out there let me see what this this is right here so the village of Dalton, this is around time where you look at the screenshot. What is that? About October was the, or October was that, that March of Springfield. They're running up the credit cards, man, like $43,000. And this is just half of what was spent during that March to uh, Springfield. There was five to 10 police officers all available for 12 days of this walk, right? Public works employees, township employees, all this to boost her brand and her ego. And all this gonna eventually will be seen by the FBI. So this is not, again, so all this you think, man, damn, this, they should have been, something should be happening right now, but this is where we are. This is where we are. Just spending all that money, that how that benefit the people in Dalton. No, it just, it just boosted one person's ego, one person's footprint. And maybe that's the reason that those goofballs gave her the top 20 global women of excellence. So you see right here, at Illinois. So you can see at the very bottom, Springfield, Illinois. Everyone's getting taken care of in this one. They got they got you got homes. You got what's that? Stan Brown. You see Lacey. You see, you see a lot of familiar names and, and people that they're hanging out. They're spending all of this money. And again, going back, is being paid for by the village of Dalton. You know, and all this eventually well, should be on the FBI's uh, desk if they have like a special desk with all the documents and stuff like that. Is it incompetence just by some of the stuff that I've seen, some of the stuff that's already been reported, I don't see how they, they're gonna be able to fix this. That's why they become so secretive and don't wanna be transparent. They're trying to find ways to get away with this. And I don't know how they're gonna figure this out. The 15 million she claims is coming in. Has she explained what that is? And like, cause she's mentioned it at least in the Roland interview and the Angela Yee interview that she brought in $15 million, even if you, secured some great ethically from taxpayers and then like well yeah i took all this money but look it don't matter it doesn't work that way but i'm wondering if that's possible if she actually is going to be able to bring that out we've learned the illinois department of human rights is investigating complaints of sexual harassment and retaliation they're filed against mayor tiffany henyard and the village of dalton and thornton township a former female employee who was henyard's assistant alleges retaliation sexual harassment and discrimination after she raised concerns about an apparent non-consensual sexual encounter between her and an unnamed village trustee. The Dalton police officer says in a separate complaint filed with the Department of Human Rights that he also faced retaliatory actions for coming forward with what he witnessed. Trustees Tammy Brown, Kiana Belcher, and Brittany Norwood did not go on that trip to Vegas. By show of hands, how many of you knew about these allegations? They tell NBC5 they're stunned to learn about the investigation by the Department of Human Rights and the allegations made by the mayor's former assistant. That could have been any one of us. That could have been either trustee, that could be anybody. I'm furious. This makes no sense. I'm hurt and I'm furious. That, that means that these people have known about this for some time. I know you guys are looking at the thumbnail and don't worry, I will explain in this video. So if you haven't heard, is another major story involving our super mayor, Tiffany Hanyard, and it's probably one of the most disturbing accusations yet. And I'll say this right now, it is all accusations at this point. Let me be perfectly clear with this because I don't wanna deal with a lawsuit. It's all accusations right now. But so far we've seen the behavior of Tiffany A. Hanyard and the people that she associates herself with, the people who are loyal to her, have patterns of being criminals having patterns of some level of criminality. So let's get into the story and then I'll tell you why I have that picture in my thumbnail. Let's get into it. This story involves serious accusations against Tiffany Hanyard and an unnamed village trustee. 
being investigated by the Illinois Department of Human Rights for sexual harassment, retaliation, and discrimination. A former female employee alleged a non-consensual sexual encounter with a trustee. An Dalton police officer claimed he faced retaliation for reporting the incident. The situation unfolded in that trip to Las Vegas. I'm sure you guys already know what that trip entailed. A lot of money being spent for no reason other to boost Mayor Henyard's ego. This female employee felt disoriented and woke up in the trustee's hotel room with no memory of the night before. According to her complaint, the woman says she went to dinner with an unnamed Dalton trustee. The complaint then recounts the following events. After dinner, she says she started to feel disoriented, extremely lightheaded, as if the ground was moving. She says she blacked out. According to the complaint, the next morning, she woke up in the trustee's hotel room with no memory of how she got there, experiencing physical discomfort. She says after returning to Dalton, Officer Byron Miles, who was part of Henyard's security detail and went on the trip to Vegas, told her a trustee on the trip told him that the trustee had unprotected sex with her. Officer Brian Miles, who was a part of the security detail, also filed a complaint alleging that he was demoted for coming forward. Now, the problem is with this, it's a lot of serious accusations that the mayor, she cared more about her image and her brand more than one of her employees being sexually assaulted. The mayor reportedly tried to keep the situation quiet. According to the complaints, the mayor said that if this information became public, she would be ruined, that all the work she'd done would be lost. The ex-employee says the mayor told her she would take care of it and to trust her. Days later, according to her complaint, the woman was put on unpaid medical leave, though she says she did not request to be put on leave. She was later terminated. This is one of the most disgusting things you could possibly do when someone is coming to you as an employer and telling you that they've been sexually assaulted and she cared more about her image and how things will look than actually trying to find the person and hold them accountable. It's pretty disgusting, but at this point, are we surprised by this. Now, again, this is all allegations. Now, do you see the, the statement from Keith Freeman, the man that doesn't lie at all and is totally believable. And this is the funny part. Keith Freeman, you know, the Hingard administration calling these two people, Brian Miles and the female employee that's been, uh, that's accusing one of the trustees of sexually assaulting her, calling these people disgruntled employees trying to exploit taxpayer money. Now, on this channel, we've demonstrated that all Tiffany Hanyard and Keith Freeman do is exploit taxpayer money. That's why people are so mad with them in the first place. So legal actions are anticipated and both the woman and Officer Miles are seeking compensation. So at this point, all we have is accusations. We don't know what exactly happened, but if this is true, someone needs to go to jail. The, the person who did it and the people who tried to cover it up. We already seen a pattern of behavior where the mayor surrounds herself with people who do whatever it takes to keep her happy because she's paying them money that they've probably never seen before and probably never will see again. She surrounds herself with people who commit crimes, criminals, people with long rap sheets, unethical behavior. These are the kind of people that she brings around. Bring anyone with any sense of integrity, she does not want to deal with them. If she can't exploit the situation, she doesn't want to deal with that situation. That's why she has a really tight knit group of people getting paid way too much money to do a lot of her bidding. But let's talk about the person involved, the trustee. I'll tell you right now, it was not Jason House. He even said so in this news clip. In a statement, trustee Jason House says he did not go on that trip to Vegas. There are a lot of evidence that there was only one male trustee that was on that trip to Las Vegas, according to credit card statements. And I cannot confirm or deny this. But I'll tell you guys right now, the name that has popped up from my sources is Andrew Holmes. They have not mentioned his name yet because it's still an ongoing investigation. And I'll say this one more time. I cannot confirm or deny the trustee that is being accused of this disgusting crime is named Andrew Holmes. We will know more in the next couple of days. You can't be surprised anymore about what you hear from this whole situation. There are trustees out there who follow a Mayor Hanyer's lead. They don't, they don't have any integrity. They know that there's things going wrong but they're too scared and spineless to actually stand up and do something. Well, maybe that's the reason why Andrew Holmes did not want to stand up and do anything. Maybe there was something that the mayor had on him. Again, all accusations, I cannot confirm or deny that this is the person they're talking about, but I know for damn sure it is not Jason House. So there's so many issues going on, so many lawsuits, churches suing uh, Tiffany Hanger, all the things that she spent the money on, all the harassment she's been doing to local businesses, trying to shut things down. 
there's so much. And the problem is, and the sad problem is, there's more people looking to step forward to tell their story on one, how this administration has exploited them and how Mayor Tiffany Hayard needs to step down. How much more do we need to see before she decides to actually be a good person and step down? Hopefully this trustee, whoever it is, and again, I cannot confirm or deny, will they have a fair investigation and we'll see what happens. But it does not look good. This is a pattern of predatory behavior from this administration and we will see where it ends up. But that's all I have. This is more of a quick video just to talk about some of the stuff I've seen, some explosive allegations coming from all the situation that happened months ago in Vegas. While again, why were they there in the first place? It was only a reason to go there was to boost Mayor Hanger's ego. That's why they went to New York. They went, they went to all these places spending all this money and for what? So we'll have more on this. Charges are pending. And I'm gonna say this one more time. I cannot confirm or deny, but from my sources, the trustee that we're talking about that is accused of this disgusting crime is Andrew Holmes. So put in the comments below, tell me what you guys think about this story and I'll see you guys in the next video.